Hello everybody! Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time it is for you where you are. That turned my login sound up a little loud. There we go. Calm down, that's the stuff. Hi! Happy Sunday! Kitty Cat's here, I'm here, we got a full cup of coffee, and we have a game we haven't seen in a while. I'm not saying I'll never stream hardcore again, because I very much want to, but... I want to do some Brewfest today. Green Arrow, thank you for the 14 month reset. Morning, everyone. Good morning. <sighs> Jamie Lee with a 52 month reset. Happy Fall Hazel. May cool breezes warm your heart and inspire you to cook comforting foods. <laughs> Need to do brew fest. There's a couple of there's a couple of new things, and they've also added new ways to get the prize tokens. So if you hated Ram Racing, then congratulations, you don't have to. I am gonna start. Let me see. I did a bunch of one-time quests in my priest already. I need basically what I need right now is two things. One of them, you know what? Let's just um let's just start Corn Dire Brew. One of the things that I want to do is farm the holiday boss for chances at the the renewed Proto Drake Brewfest saddle. And last time I tried to do this, I hit instance cap. I hit um, you've entered too many instances lately, the 10 instances per hour. And then I had to do something else. So that seems like it'll be a really good moment for me to then pivot and then do the something else. Which is to say, um, getting the 200 tokens I need for the shield transmog on a shield-wearing character. But in the meantime, Corn Darbrit. Maybe I'll get lucky, it'll be like the first kill of the day, and then we can speculate that maybe it's maybe it's one of those, um, Love Rocket style things. <laughs> uh, Marilonix, thank you very much for the seven-month reset. This is the first retail stream of the new old main. I feel like I did at least one when I switched. I don't remember what I did, though. I don't remember what we did. Anything you want to get from the event? Yeah, shield mog. I got the toy already. Um, I got the toy before filming the news video so I could put it in there. So I've got the brew barrel. And then I need the new the new mog. I'm not actually too concerned about the tro Proto Drake saddle, but I figure it doesn't take very long to do the holiday boss. It's very, it's one of those things that just kind of falls over. So I may as well, especially if I have, um, I have a lot of characters that can do a fast queue. I can send at least 10 of them through today. People report quick success in your comment section. I've run my entire roster of like, what, 15 to 20 else through at least twice. So I've probably given it 40, 50 tries because I've two and then like a half. I imagine, I mean, I don't, I'm not running rarity, but if I had to guess, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of I've tried 40 times with nothing. But it could be one of those, it could be one of those left rocket things where you've got a secret better chance on your first, your first one of the day. I don't know if they confirmed anything for that for this one in particular. That would be too nice of them. <laughs> I'm gonna get it first, first trot of the day. <laughs> Guess I'll go do that now. Uh, I would like to get it, because then I can, um, then I cannot even have hit instance cap, which means that if I want to do, like, any instanced content, transmog farming, dungeons, then I would not be logged out. Because my plan for getting Brewfest tokens on my all, I was gonna do Crinkle. I was gonna take Crinkle. I was gonna... Uh, let's open it up. Do the do. No, just uh, <laughs> achieve or traveler's log progress for 600 Brewfest prize tokens, but no luck. Somebody else got a brawler statue trinket. No luck. We can certainly keep trying though. <laughs> 10 plus a day that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not confirmed. Strongly seems like first try of the day is best chance. Okay. I wonder then if I should just only bother with the first try of the day. I The efficiency of it really appeals to me. I mean, we've got until October 6th. And also, backing up that um, backing up that notion is the fact that, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of middling on the dragon riding armor. So maybe uh, let's go. Let's go get the let's go work on the shield transmog. Let's get 200 tokens on a shield where recommend just first of the day. Yeah, I just like the secret better first chance thing. It's so anti alt. I prefer it because. I just wish they would confirm it so that you can feel secure in your choice um, because it makes the, it makes not the optimal thing to do because you would still get an additional chance. It just wouldn't be a very big one for the rest of your elves. You certainly can still run yourself silly. I just like that not being, you know, 45 times better than just doing it once. I want um, Crinkle because these guys can't use shields. My shield wearing characters are Honey Plum, Crinkle, and Anthus. Really not that many shield wearers around here. 
Um, I mean, Honey Plum gets the healer key. Let me let me go see. She's definitely done this at least once. Now, and I. <laughs> the logic makes sense, but I can't explain the different pieces of it. Because she has a healer queue, I've definitely done Corrin Diary before, and therefore already gotten the item that you turn in for the once per event quest for 40 tokens. There, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> it was just stuck in my in my word hole. I'm so she's sitting on 13. I'll just um I'll do one Corrin Diary on her just to kind of um just to just to get an extra 13 tokens and you know it could happen it's a chance <sighs> these are great names oh thank you item is boa whatever tune you like most oh hmm. i want coffee <laughs> my warlock in hardcore is now level 33 I did some off stream uh, duskwood leveling i went into i went all around the dangerous graveyard I went into the crypt and up the other side, and then back down a few more times to farm mobs down there. I did a bunch of quests. <sighs> I was happy. Looted a couple chests. I had two um, scary Morladim moments in Duskwood. One of them, well, okay, three if you count the one that didn't that did not involve me. The first one, I see a level twenty nine mage, and Morladim is a level thirty five elite. Um, quest boss that patrols around the graveyard, the northern end of the graveyard. And I see this mage, like, kind of look at him, and then I see the mage pull him on purpose with a frostbolt, unless it was just an accidental tab frostbolt, but he pulls him, and he, like, kites him around for a while, and I guess he's trying to, like, you know, kite him and, and, and kill him, but um, he gets him to, like, 88% health, and then, uh, I, guess, I suppose, runs out of things, and then decides, never mind, and just starts booking it. Doesn't manage to leash it and make it away, so that was one thing. The second moment was when I um, I was in the area. I was also just kind of tabbing and killing quest quest enemies, working on the skeletons in that area. And I tab and send Hellgrave at my next target and realize while my Voidwalker is en route that I've tabbed and sent him at Morlinim. Luckily for me, I have a stop button hotkeyed right next to the go button. So I told him, no, 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 come back. I'm sorry. And I managed to abort before I aggroed him. Which was my second encounter. The third one, I was coming up out of the crypt. I was coming up out of the crypt. Um, and there's like a lot of skeletons up at the top of the crypt entrance. And I was coming up pretty slowly, just sort of, um, you know, clearing out a path for me to leave. And that is one of the areas that Morlid and Pats. And I was just kind of clearing skeletons, minding my own business. And then I, something punches me and I'm like, uh oh. Uh, he kind of jumped me from behind. And I realized that it was more lit in. Oh, roller statue. Any luck with, from this thing? Uh, nope, just prize tokens. Okie dokie. I realized that it was the boss. <laughs> Instantly sacrificed my void walker. I didn't even try and taunt him. I just sacked the void walker, got my bubble, hit my swiftness potion, beelined it out of there. Worked like a charm. Um, no complaints. 10 out of 10. It was great. Big, big, big fat thousand health absorb shield plus uh, movement speed and you are out of there. Ooh, there's wither, ride the, ride the bark over here. Wriggly, wriggly worm bark. <sighs> Truly a motivated new dog owner. Yeah, yeah, no, it, wor it worked out. I don't have this flight path yet. That's remarkable. So I have currently 27 and then I'm going to get, let me see. Another 40 for turning it in. I'm probably going to do the Dragon isles -y stuff first. There are some pretty easy one-time quests you can do with the actual Brewfest area, but I'm going to not stress about those too much. Her Hearthstone will take her to Dalaran, which is weird. That's weird. Can I flight path my way back to Veldraken and maybe like... Yeah, here. Let, fly me up there. And then I'll set my hearth to Veldraken because it's strange that I hadn't done that yet. Sounds like you get into a lot of trouble when you're not streaming. Ah, trouble, trouble bubbles. <laughs> trouble, trouble, trouble. Thank you, you get. We were fine. It was fun though. I got a lot of experience from doing all those quests. I did not do the, the Morlidum quest. I did do Stalin Mismantle. He's very easy. His quest is rated much higher than it should be. Um, I soloed him that one time at 29 and then I did it again. And it was fine. <sighs> um, made some gold, sold some greens. I had a pair of... um green cloth gloves of the eagle that I sold for a gold 50, which I was pretty happy about. Do I have all the cosmetics from Brewfest? I have a 
have I'm getting more of them today. Uh, who needs a dollar on Hearthstone when you have a dedicated dollar on Hearthstone? I can't fathom why Honey Plum's Hearthstone was set to that to that in. It's I don't even I couldn't even tell you if that's the Wrath Leisure Domain Lounge or the or the um, the Legion one. I I have no idea. It's strange. Dude, Dan, thank you for the 15 month resub. Wow, 15? It is a round number. <laughs> it's round if you're dividing by fives. And five is a round number because the second, the lower part of the character for it, um, is like, is like a little, is like a little squishy pillow. Back on retail. Yeah, I'm gonna do a retail stream today, see how it goes. Starting Dusk Wood today, at least to clear the lower level quests. Nice. Best guess is the Wrath one because of time walking. Hmm. Um, some goggles, they made cosmetic, not sure if it was this year or last year or longer ago. Yeah, I probably don't have that. I probably don't have that. I'll take a look at it. Boo, that round number joke. You didn't like that one? <laughs> Finally discovering demonology in retail. I've been missing out. Mm. Warlocks are always up to something. They're always, there's a warlock in my guild that's always talking about their specs. And it's always like, this spec is really bad and this spec is really good, but I don't want to play this spec. Or like this spec is really fun, but not. There's always something going on, and I'm a terrible person. So apparently, I'm only listening with like a third of my brain because I couldn't tell you any of the details of which specs are good or bad or fun or not fun. But they're always doing something over there. I'm glad you're having a good time. <sighs> did you know they added a new Hearthstone toy? It's called Path of the Naru, part of the Eridor Unlock quest. I did not hear that. New dragon riding mount customizations. They look nice. They look neat. <sighs> I am feeling like I will be less stressed with retail if I'm not worried about collecting everything. I really, what I really want is just like a specific goal to just focus on and do and then not worry about any of the other things going on because otherwise I think I'm going to fracture into 14 pieces and then um, be scattered across the seven realms. So I've, um, hoard only. Oh, well, that's weird. Oh, I see. I've already turned it in. Okay. So I came out here. I was going to set my hearthstone. <laughs> <sighs> terrible character flaw that I love my terrible jokes, but I have a hard time appreciating other people's terrible jokes. <laughs> okay, we're gonna set to here. Hello. It's it's not an, it's. <laughs> oh, every time I walk by and they're like, "Champion, may I have a word with you?" No. <laughs> No, you may not. I'm um, going to the Brewfest guys down this way. I may still need to go to actual... Um, where do Horde have Brewfest? I'm an orc. Why am I an orc? Where do Horde have Brewfest? Is it is it Ironforge? Orgrimmar. I, Horde don't go to Ironforge. They don't like the cold. Their, fing their fingies get cold. Uh, outside of Orgrimmar. Okay. Well, that's easy enough. Uh, what? So you want... Yeah, these are actually both kind of fun quests for like just some flight stones and ten, ten tokens. So that's fine. Mm. It makes a nice sound. Not not mad at that. And then the the twelve ins. I never did find an add-on that would like mark them on my map. Except I'm, I suppose I could get like Tom Tom and then input coordinates, but I am allergic to that for really unclear reasons. Whoa, 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 whoa. Refuse. <laughs> Hate that everyone wants something from me and I just want to live my life. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a very sandbox game, but it's a sandbox game with a bunch of blinking flashing signs being like, play with this shovel. Here's a bucket. That's like, I, I appreciate that you want to, you know, make people aware of the different things to do. There has to be a, a less chaotic way to do that though. <laughs> Oi. Mm. 85. 90. 95. And 100. Oh my god, we did it. <laughs> we did a quest. One of the things that's so appealing about WoW is the straightforwardness of the goal when you have a thing to do. <sighs> you know. Get quest, kill monsters, etc. I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do the ones up this way. It's, f is it farther? It might be farther. 
unfortunate consequence of not having everything account bound. I haven't even done them on my main. <laughs> oh, like those dailies you can do them while you queue on DPS tunes. Oh, that's a good idea. That's not a, that's not a bad not a bad thing. The first time I had to run the barrel twice the first time I did this because I was um, spilling the beer everywhere. I think that the speed boosts, uh, even though I'm hitting them right now, I think they're totally bait because there's no time limit on you delivering the beer. There's only penalties for hitting obstacles and spilling it. So it follows that you really don't want to go fast. Um, I don't have, as far as I can see, a buff that's going to time out. You can go fast for fun, but it doesn't seem, aside from you moving on with your day faster, if you're like really sick at this, it doesn't seem like a good thing. If anything, it makes it harder. So we can just kind of, you know, mosey our way on down here. Because I bet you if I turn in the one barrel and I don't hit anything, I can just get this done in one go. We'll see. I am a sensible barrel roller. I am every insurance company's dream. I suppose there are sometimes moving obstacles. Maybe those are easier to dodge if you're fast, but even then I have doubts. Variety streams? Uh, never say never. I often say that I have no plans though, and that's usually true. <laughs> Although to be fair, I don't have plans for much. I plan my days in two hour windows. <laughs> I'm not very forward looking. Real life penalty would be less tips per hour. Had no idea there was another route. Yeah, there's two spots you can, s well, as far as I know, there's two spots. Maybe there's more. There's two spots you can start it from. I think that yours is faster. I think yours is a, is a shorter, shorter path, it feels like. Yeah, there you go. See, faster than doing it twice. Well, for me anyway. I suppose some of you can probably hit speed boost and also not spill the beer, but that wasn't going to happen for me. I have never played Sea of Stars, no. <sighs> Moose has grown so fast based on the IG picks. Yeah, he had a real growth spurt. He's grown like a weed. Alright. I have 47 badges. I'm going to have... Well, we'll, we'll, we'll stop by at Orgrimmar. We'll stop by. And then go poke around and do some of the basics. I don't think I can need to do the Elix on Parade one. It's an, it's an easy way to get 40 tokens, but also it's kind of a lot of travel time. Oh, man. Curse me for trying to do this on a Horde character. I don't know my way around on Horde. <laughs> <sighs> Actual Oktoberfest. What do you do at a beer festival? I suppose you drink. <laughs> I suppose you drink beer. That's probably the main attraction. I remember, I have a vague memory of visiting one in Oregon and seeing, like, it was like on a field. There were dogs. I don't think the dogs were a feature. I think they were a, a, a beneficial side effect. Drink beer, eat sausage, go to bathroom. <laughs> drink, eat, dance. Mound Angel, I have no idea. Um, is It's an isolated memory in a sea of, I don't know stuff that happened. I think I'm slowly blotting out that portion of my life. How many beards? Oh, all of them. All right, you turn in that. So 40 tokens for that. Yeah, 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 I went there already. I went there already. So now I'm sitting on 87. I don't think I've been out here in a long time. Brewfest has always been Ironforge for me. Um. Do I want to do any 87, 120? No, let's just go do the tour. Let's just go do the do the in tour. We don't need to do any of this. So we're going to go back to Valdraken. It's so weird that this is... Well, it's a 30 minute cooldown because I'm not in a guild. <laughs> Maybe if it is... A, well, am I going to... Is this going to take more than half an hour? Nah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. You get 120 coins because there's you get 10 per and it's 12 in. So it's 120 for... Unless I'm mistaken. Unless it's more than that. Um... Different beers, hang out with your homies. It does seem a little off not being in the snowy mountains. Is beer better consumed around snow or like in cold areas? Or is it just that you want the beer to be cold? Because I know that a lot of beer marketing, and I should be clear, I'm a, I'm a big beer noob. It's just never been my cup of tea. But, literally. It's, um, there's a lot of like cold snowy mountains. There's polar bears. Uh, brewed in colder climate countries. Okay. Depends on the person. Love very cold beer. 
Oh, I'm not doing- No, you've tricked me. <laughs> I didn't want to do your quest. I came here for Brewfest. Brewfest, I tell you. Okay, now I knew- I figured out where the inns are in Waking Shores and in um, Feldraza. So I'll do those two first. When it comes to the other areas, I'm going to have to figure it out. Maybe we'll make a puzzle of it. Maybe I won't look up coordinates and I'll just kind of look off the achievement. Because um, it's called a round on the house. I never did it. I, or I never finished it anyways. Yeah, we'll go poke around. Depends on the person. Yeah. I know there's a thing in... I, I know I know somebody from England who prefers to drink their beer at like room temperature. And um, they catch a reasonable amount of flack for it from everybody else. But there's always a warm beer for them at any kind of party. <laughs> Indeed, best kept cold doesn't mean it has to be cold out to enjoy. Mm. Bad beer should be cold, good beer can be either. Yeah. Different people enjoy different things. I don't really enjoy beer at all. I've tried a lot of them. I have, I, I lived in Portland. I tried a great deal of different beers and they all um, tasted like beer. And I think it's just, I've acquired a variety of tastes, tastes in my adulthood that I did not start out with when I was a young child. I'm a fan of like, blue cheeses, um, coffee grew on me eventually. Uh, this one is like, you know what, my dragon's toyed. But, uh, beer never, beer never, never really clicked and I, th I think that's okay. <laughs> I have a German friend who drinks coke and beer, they are wrong. <laughs> I have the coordinates. Oh, that's okay. Thank you very much though. That's very kind of you. Chocolate stout vanilla shake. That was so good. There's a recipe in the Hearthstone Innkeeper's book cookbook. Like the tavern cookbook. And it's for Ungaro Tar Pit Pudding. And it's a chocolate pudding that includes stout. Eon's fringe. Yeah. It's a chocolate pudding that includes stout. And I made it on a cooking stream. And then tried it later on like a regular gaming stream. And that was a... It was just a strange one. Okay, so we need to go up a little bit more. Maybe I should have done this on my evoker. <laughs> she gets sore. Saw you online. Stop by. Hope you're happy, healthy. Catch you on the flip. Thanks. Can we find it? Yeah, we made it. There we go. There's one. Yeah, it's 10 per, and I think there's there's 12, because there's three per zone and there's four zones. So you get 120 for doing this. Generally speaking, not a big fan of acquired tastes. Trust me, it will get better. It's just not a great sales pitch. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's, that's, that's reasonable. I think sometimes if there is a different incentive for you to continue consuming the thing and you acquire the taste incidentally, as opposed to like forcing yourself through it until you acquire it, then that can be that can be all right. I picked up a taste for some really earthy um, fermented teas that if somebody asks me to describe what they taste like, I will tell them they taste like the forest floor. It tastes like earth. Um, it tastes like walking through a primordial forest um, <laughs> and then licking the bark. Like it's not it's not a traditionally um, sweet or even palatable flavor, but it's got so much richness and depth to it that if you are just in the mood to walk through that primordial forest, it's, you're gonna have the time of your life. I want to go to the Wingrest Embassy first. No, 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 not kombucha. Puertis. I don't know what kombucha is. <laughs> I will tell you, kombucha is, you know, sold in grocery stores that don't need liquor licenses, but I swear it makes me tipsy. <laughs> I think that's how bad my alcohol tolerance is, is that, um, or, yeah, I think that's how, that's how flimsy I am when it comes to alcohol, is that kombucha will genuinely get me kind of lit. Uh, local brewery has a plum Berliner, it's very sour and I love it. Think of the poor yeah, it's not like a regulated thing, but I wouldn't drink it and drive myself just because I know my own body and that's just not a good idea. I'm going to... The Wingrest Embassy, which I've I've lost. I've lost it! It's marked on the map. I'll get there. Honestly, all of this wandering around lost is going to be pretty good for me because I am going to 
uh, reacquire my bearings. I haven't been in the Dragon Dragonelles in a little bit, and I've forgotten everything. There we go, yeah, yeah. So you get up here, and then you go all the way up here. So if you see me wandering around lost, just let me, just, just let it happen. <laughs> Don't worry about it, we'll make it, we'll make it there eventually. I'll ask her help if I'm looking for it. I want that. There we go. And then we're going to the Ruby Life Shrine and the Dragon Scale Expedition Base Camp. <sighs> Bring out the, the booch. Abby Oxo Cube, thank you very much for the 29 month resub. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I hope you guys are having a comfy weekend or an eventful weekend. Some people like exciting weekends with activities and memories. I think that's great for them. <laughs> Also, don't love watch the show. It gets great after 20 hours. Too much to sit through, not enjoy. Yeah, on a smaller scale, that was one problem that I had with a couple of different Black Mirror episodes is that for the first, like, 15 minutes of a lot of them, there's nothing to really hold on to yet because you haven't figured out... It hasn't, like, made clear what the, the conceit or premise of the episode is. So you're just watching seemingly random people do se seemingly random things. Or not random, but, you know... You're just watching something that seems unremarkable at first and just like taking note of all the details that you can just in case they're important later. <laughs> um, there's a lot of... I think that actually this this one is at the bottom. <sighs> and then later on, you know, you're glad that you're paying attention in the beginning. So I'm, I'm game for it, but it's always a bit funny being like, all right, this person's walking to their car. They look stressed. I wonder why. <laughs> Wish I could understand the pure unadulterated hatred you have for coordinates. I I think that that's harsh. I think that it's more of a feeling. It's um I do use them sometimes, but they kind of make. I don't like the way they make me feel. I want to um get up. No, I don't want to get up. I want to go in. That's right. If you see me wandering around lost, you're in the right street. I won't help even if you do ask, because I don't know where to go either. Mm. There we go. So that's two of three for Waking Shores. Is it? Did I do? Did I do Expedition Base Camp already? No, we need we need Dragon Scale Base Camp, which is over this way by the big cross to mining picks. How do they make you feel? Let's get to the bottom of this. Um, it's it's behind the back of the jaw, and it's kind of like a tense, crunchy feeling. Um that's kind of like right here on the sides, behind the mandible, sort of in the neck, and it the the instinct and the desire is to shut out all of the extra information because I'm being, like, it's just too much. Um, I don't parse them comfortably. I'm going this way. <laughs> Pure hatred. Yeah, Jeff's words, not mine. <laughs> I reserve pure hatred. For, I mean, ideally nothing. Whenever I experience what I think is pure hatred, I try to evaluate what's going on because this doesn't seem like a good thing for me. I'm beer over here. <sighs> I wonder how you do with an orientation map and a compass, topographic orientation map. I think it would depend on if there's anything else going on that needs my attention and if this is life or death. And if there's anybody else in the area that would be better at it than me. <laughs> If I'm alone in the woods and that's what I got, and I will be consumed by a bear if I don't figure it out, then I think we can probably do it. But um, outside of the thrill of um, fear of death, I think that we're not looking good. I don't know, though. I've never, I've never done orienteering. I'm going... I'm also pretty consistently wrong about directions. Um, whenever I think that I've parked a certain way or we need to go this way to get back to the entrance or whatever... Terrible sense of direction. Pretty consistently wrong. So, I need to go in Onaran Plains to Marakai, Rizathar Riz Reach of the Shady Sanctuary. I know where two of those three are. We'll start with Marakai. Hmm. Had to draw topographic maths, maps for math class in high school. Trigonometry in practice. I imagine if I'm in danger of getting eaten by a bear, I think my navigational skills might suffer. <laughs> I'm in my in my mind's eye. The bear is not in the frame yet. <laughs> it's more the concept of the bear. Oh. Vertala, a three-month sub in advance. Holy moly! Thank you so much. 
Um, place with the teleporter is is the first. Thank you very much. Let me let me wander around though. Don't don't worry about it. You're all great. Uh, the only navigation you need when encountering a bear is away, preferably quickly. <sighs> Imagine running away from a big bear and then you trip on a pair of bear cubs and then you go, whoa, whoops, a daisy do. So is the inn up here or is the inn over here? Rhetorical question. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna go ahead and assume it's the big one. Had to measure everything, do calculations. We could rainy buckets while we were out measuring. I have a vague memory of like measuring a road or maybe like tracking cars along a road. There was some kind of outdoor data collection project in school at one point in my life. Uh, maybe upstairs? Oh, you know what? No, 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 it's over here. Hmm. At least you get to see cute bear cubs as your last thing in life. I don't think I knew about this inn. I think that this is absolute news to me. Hearthkeeper Bane. I always liked the, the fuzzy furs and blankets that the centaurs have. Okay, and then Riss of the Czar and then the Shady. Yeah, 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 I have gone the wrong way. That's fine. My Charmed Life, thank you for the 44 month resub. Holy moly. 147. Yeah, we'll be fine. There's herbs around here, although I don't really need them. Hmm. One thing that I haven't really sorted out for myself is what I want to do with my professions now that I'm switching mains. And I don't think I'm going to sort it out right now, but I can talk it through and maybe that'll maybe that'll be good. Currently as it stands, I have on my old main, on Zelixia, my evoker, she is alchemy herb. And that was great because whenever I was out in the world doing world quests or camping rares or whatever it was I was doing, I was getting herbs to sell or craft with and then alchemy of course was very good and I've, I've fully leveled up in spectator alchemy she has complete alchemy done my new main slash old main the gnome that i'm going to main for the next season she has tailoring and enchanting and i'm pretty sure it used to be she was always enchanting because i remember having to stick around after the end of raids in order to disenchant things but I think the tailoring was new. I think I just did that as a gold making thing for Dragonflight. And both her tailor tailoring and enchanting are not like completely specced out, but they're more than default. They are above the baseline. I have put a non-zero amount of effort into them over the expansion. It was the first character that I started doing professions on after my main. And then I, of course, abandoned it for a great deal of time. So there's something there. I really, really, really like having alchemy on my raiding and dungeon main because of the extra duration of my files. But I don't really want to duplicate the profession, especially not when I have it fully specced out of my other character. Like, and I don't really want a dead profession slot that I, I've specced it just for that buff and then not be crafting with it. So I think I need to let the alchemy go, commit to the enchanting, and then either drop tailoring for Herba or commit to tailoring. But armor crafting was never really going to be a suit. I, I, I kind of want to know what they're going to do with professions in the next expansion. But I guess I just have to figure out what I want to do for this expansion. I could certainly drop tailoring and then pick up herbalism just to gather for like a little extra gold on the side for fun. But if I wanted to make gold, I would just log on to Zelixia and I would do like crafting, right? Alright, we need the Shady Sanctuary. Oh, I made it to the Shady Sanctuary. Oh, bar tab, bar tab barrel in here. Yeah. I realistically, even with nearly maxed out herbalism on Zelixia, I'm still not going out to actually grind herbs for gold because it's just not close to as... I mean, if I was in the mood to pick flowers, I'm sure, but it's just not really worth... Um, it's not really worth relative to just crafting, like purchasing and crafting. Hmm. So we let alchemy go. We probably let herbalism go. It would just be picking incidental herbs. I do like having a gathering prof on my main though. And am I gonna really use, I don't know if I'm really gonna use, how did I miss the Elgothera court? Oops. 
Oh well, we'll go do Azur Span and then we'll um and then we'll figure it out. Campaign tonight is nowhere in Descara. <sighs> yeah. Mining? For what though? I have mining on Crinkle. If you're in the mood to pick flowers for gold, there's not dragonflight options that are way better. Yeah, but I like the dragonflight herbalism because I like the different, like, the elemental imbues. I like the overload. I like the, um, you know, the finesse and the, the... I like all the stats and stuff. I like having herbalism gear. I like the mini game of dragonflight herbing. It's just not, you know, viable enough to do for gold making if I was really in the mood to make gold. I guess it depends on what I want. Let's go to Iskara first. New main props. Yeah, I'm just kind of musing. I don't think I'm going to come to any conclusions today. I'm just kind of talking out loud. Uh, maybe they do something with archaeology. You could scratch the gathering itch that way. Do you mind having to switch tunes to gather? I don't think I will, is the thing. I don't think I would switch tunes to gather. I think that if I'm... I think that there's going to be a zero amount of gathering happening. <laughs> If, uh, if I don't take herb on her. But the, the gathering is not really for gold making. It would mostly just be to not feel like I have a wasted profession slot in the event that I don't do tailoring. I should probably look at her tailoring and figure, if, figure out if there's any happy benefit to sticking with it. Anything decent that I really want that would be fun to keep tailoring for. Camp Antonidas and Nowhere. So Nowhere's right there. Antonidas is like... Down there? No, that's the archives. I actually have no idea. I also apparently don't have a lot of flight points. Ronin's shield, Thien's watch. Oh, there it is, there it is. It's right in the middle, right by the Dream Surge, okay. Speaking of the dream search, there's something that I'd like to do on Inksy, but I'm I'm focusing on the brew festing first. <laughs> JC seems to be busy making rings and necks. I am hesitant to put I'm never gonna talk to anyone at a trade chat. I know myself well enough. I'm not in trade chat, I'm not reading trade chat, I'm never ever gonna talk to anybody at a trade chat. So if I can't do something completely hands off desynced from having to log on or be on at a specific time. I think that armor crafting is not a good fit for me because I'm never going to be like, oh, I can get on and make that for you or like, you know, like it's, <laughs> I am, I am not available enough and I am not social enough to, to actually like coordinate with people to create gear for them. I can create gear for like myself and my alts. I can create gear for like, Flabby, I guess, but I think he's got Taylor on a character too. Mm. In theory, you should do the five quests for the cooking pot event. Yeah, it's a good idea. Mm. I wouldn't expect me to do any suggestions of things to do just because I'm. My main feeling in Dragonflight right now is overwhelmed with too many things to do, so all it, all it does is stress me out. <laughs> all I want to do is pick one thing and do it, and then pick another thing and do that. <sighs> you find a stupid amount of cloth as a fully spec tailor. Hmm. Tailoring is the gathering profession. Grinding yellow harpies and hardcore stressful. Don't ask me how I know. Are you in the charred veil? I have made it. All right. Is there a bar tap barrel? No, and that's Archdrude Hamul Rune Totem. I'd be surprised if he doesn't have that market mostly on lockdown. I mean, I think he's been grinding. I'm sure that the, <laughs> the, the auction house has been breathing... Uh, a, a sigh of, a sigh of, um, of, um, you know, flabby freedom. He's been in, um, hardcore. <laughs> Those markets are the ones that are getting, getting sorted out. Mm. Getting my butt to the safety of Duskwood now, though. <laughs> I might be. Who wants to know? Mm. What level is, uh, Dame again? Which craft ordering gets better? Like, being able to do, just do it like that. Don't usually see a lot of orders. Yeah, I would like to see craft ordering become usable um, for people to get, like, you know, viable gear made without having to coordinate with people so much. But that's just because I'm um, incredibly antisocial. <laughs> that's not necessarily a good quality to have in an MMO player. Um, I like interacting with my bubbles. Um, I don't like going outside of my bubbles. 
Half a bubble from 27. Older than your hunter. Oh, oh nice. Hmm. Prof's methods are best for gold making. I have a video that talks about how I made gold in Dragonflight. Um, but the specific professions are going to kind of change and juggle over time. Very market dependent and very like overtime dependent. But I did really well out of alchemy. Okay. Camp nowhere. And there's a there's a video on that. Is it here? Gold? Yeah, it's the one. <laughs> that was the last guide that I did that I felt really proud of, I think. Bar tab barrel. Did you know you have to click search when you're in the public tab for orders to show up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit um a bit silly. There's that. So we're at 197, and all we need to do is go to Algothera Court in Thaldrazis. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna hearth. <laughs> I'm gonna hearth. Well, no, I can't, actually. Can I Astral Shaman... Yeah, I can Astral Shaman cheating. Ha <laughs> ha! Find the market for alchemy goods fluctuates? Oh, totally, yeah. Hmm. Should make my else different professions now that the Dracothus boom's done. Set up transmute spec to mass produce Dracothus. I'm curious to kind of check. Um, I want to see how much it's crashed. I want to look at my my fully spec at main and see what her what her margins look like on that. Brewfest in Veldrak. Algothera court. I um, am really goofy and I don't just fly off the top of the seat of the aspects. If you want to get anywhere in the Dragon Isles. <laughs> It's really a, a good idea to just port yourself to the top and then you have all of the elevation in the world so that you're never going to be running out of vigor while you're heading places. And I never do this. I just burn like all of my vigor just getting into the air off the ground of Valdrakan like a chicken. <sighs> Is it this? It's a bit funny to me that I'm like picking up all these flight paths and doing all this exploring on Honey Plum who's a shaman that I've kind of forgotten. I know her name's cute. And I wanted I wanted to get orc heritage armor, so that was one thing that she did. Also, I should probably re reapply her orc heritage armor. Is that my weapon? Oh, that's just what she's wearing. That's just the weapon that she has on. What would be a more matching kind of kind of thing? What has she got like brown leather and fur? One-handed axes. Yeah, there's got to be a furry something, something orc related. Or just, maybe it doesn't even need fur. <laughs> you know, hard to, hard to get dry cleaned. <laughs> Pardon me. Did you ask your close personal friend Ian to make this game less overwhelming? Oh. I'm hesitant to actually like rail for changes to it because I am so in my own head that I can't tell if it's the game or if it's me or more likely it's both. Um, I think my capacity for dealing with a lot of simultaneous incoming distractions has fallen to nothing lately. And... Uh, and I don't know if I can completely hold that against the game. Round on the house. I do think it is a little bit the game, though, because I know I'm not the only person with that experience. There we go. We got our achievement. And we can head back to Valdraken, which is pretty close by. Hmm. I said out loud, bless you, like you could hear me. <laughs> I, uh, I bless the dog when he sneezes. <laughs> or the cat. As a returning player, I have no earthly idea where the story is going with so many quests in Valdraken. Mm hmm I am a person with that experience. Some people don't mind, find it overwhelming at this point. Yeah. I don't think I want less things to do. I just want them to be better organized so that it's more reasonable for a new player to either figure out what their starting point is and kind of get a clear idea of what are they going to get for doing this thing. Is this story? Is this feature? Um, is this, you know, <laughs> there's got to be a better, a better menu than just champion. May I have a word with you? I'm going to buy my shield. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I had a goal. I got 200 Brewfest prize tokens and I'm going shopping. Where's the, where's the vendor? 
We don't even have to go back to Orgrimmar. It's great. There's the toy. This is the shield. That's the appearance that we want. Watch your back. All done. Great to meet you. Oh yeah, you can. The goggles are amogable now, so you could buy them. They're not new, but they are learnable. I think that might have been the case. I don't know when they added that. Do I care? They look ridiculous. It's 200 more. I guess I could just do it again, though. In theory, I know where all the ins are now. <laughs> Don't think I want the game to yell at me so much with new things to do that don't really matter. Yeah, I think that's- I think I'm with you there. Why are mages hated on so much? That's the first I've heard of it. <laughs> Having a blast with my frost mage. Ask for the synth goggles from the Elec Hunt guy. Free one, same mog. When whites became mogable. Got the goggles for free. Okay. Okay, um, Iron Forge. Should we do a corn dire brew? Just because we can. It's funny to me that I get to Iron Forge via the portal room. Not for taking an Iron Forge portal, but for taking a Boralus portal that leads to an Iron Forge portal. <laughs> Oh, it's easy to get the 200 tokens. The The bar tabs across the Dragon Elves, I feel like, are very nice. Um, I prefer just flying around to, um, I prefer the flying around to, like, the ram racing. A lot of things can feel too time-gated. Mm. Revamp of the quest log. Add a better sorting system, gives indications to goals instead of just what zones the quest came from. I think the tricky thing is that, any luck? Nope, okay. Tricky thing is that a revamped quest log with the intent of making it easier to pick a goal and have it be less overwhelming runs a very real risk, if not impeccably designed, of just being more overwhelming. Like having more features, more sorting, more... You know, the, the current quest log, as aggressive as it is, is a list, and um, anything, they, they have to be very careful if changing that to make it easier to navigate and not harder. <sighs> Can you imagine if they, uh, if the game decided to algorithmically recommend you content to do, like a Netflix engine? <laughs> Hey, you seem to enjoy doing heritage armor quests, and you qualify for this one. We've noticed that you tend to do the story campaign quests. Have you been to go see Bane and Onar in Plains yet? <laughs> it's like the adventure journal, but it like, notices what you do. They would probably do that. <laughs> that's, that's probably on a whiteboard somewhere. I don't know if I think that's a good idea, or if it makes me want to cry. Oh, <sighs> see the quest is old. I am in Boralus. Why am I in Boralus? I'm in Boralus because I'm going to Ironforge. That's what's going on. Also, I sold some, some direct this. You joke, I bet you all my channel points that this will happen. Yeah. Can we get Clippy to tell us that? <laughs> really? Players like you tend to enjoy doing this content. I'm going to Ironforge. Why am I going to Ironforge? Goggles, that's why. Hmm. Thanks, Angie. Here is board short quest text intro to a story you could play through, maybe in the adventure journal. Button that puts you on track to getting there. Yeah. 
You seem to like collecting transmog. Here's a random belt. Go get it. Fetch. <laughs> you see a little um, animation of like a, a dog ball with the, the chucker thing. Iron forge this way. You know, players like me enjoy gambling and I can't gamble here today. There's just no risk in retail. <laughs> or at least there's... Nope, nope, there's no risk. <laughs> So, we're sitting on 75. I don't actually know if I need any more tokens for anything. We'll go talk to- this is the Wolper Tinker guy. So you get- you get some goggles. Are they- no, those are a different appearance. Those are not the same appearance. Those are a different goggle appearance than the other goggles, so I do need 200 more. They have been added to my appearance collection now, though, so that's good. Those are totally different. I feel... Um... Pedantic. <laughs> sure, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna get myself 200 more then. I am sitting on 75 already, which is decent. I think I can get 10 just from like doing this little intro quest here. Yeah, 10 for just doing this. Because I, I have the achievement now, so I don't really need to do all of the inns across the Dragon Isles again. Also, the achievement was never really that <laughs> that big of a deal to me personally, but I do have it in case I ever decide to one day lose my gosh darn mind and then go start collecting all the achievements. It's bad enough that I want all the transmog. Okay, all right. Uh, so now we're at 85. I'm not doing the chat on thing. I found that there's not really enough people to do the chat on thing anymore. Maybe it was more populated early. I'm glad I already have my chat on trophy because otherwise that would be really annoying to get now. Let's go back to the Dragon Elves and just go get ourselves... Actually, yeah, like a full tour will get it all completely done. And we know where they are now, so that's something. Mogs and Mounts will keep you busy for a while. You can do chat on solo now? Do you think so? I didn't discover that to be the case unless I was missing some kind of mechanic of how to do it. I went and sat there on my own the other day on Friday night and nothing happened. Did it solo yesterday. How did you start it? Hmm. Only one way to find out if you die here, it doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, I need, let's see. At least I'm an, an a evoker now and I'm a Drakthir, so I can, if I run out of, um, if I run out of vigor, I can just soar. <laughs> But they may have patched it since Friday. I know on Friday, um, I it wouldn't work when I was on my own. And then I got there and there were three people sitting at the table. And it wasn't working. And then I sat down and then it started with four of us. But they could have adjusted it since Friday. I have a vault. <laughs> we'll have to look into that later. Let's do um, Ian's Fringe first. And then we'll, we'll stop by Algathar on our way north. You know what else I need to do that I would like to do that I will maybe look into after I finish getting the, the coins for the goggles? I will want to do some more um, whelp daycare. I'm still not quite done with it. That is something I am not planning to do on my on my new main. I've, I'm already this deep in on this character. I'm just going to stick with this and, and <laughs> finish it on Zalixia. Okay. I'm like a non-zero amount of um, of the way through it, at least. Speaking of Drak, they're currently on PTR. If you're on Bargain Bin Fandral, hey! <laughs> you can use sword anytime. You should if you get bored. There's an entire zone under that platform that's fully sorable. Oh, cool. That's neat. Bargain Bin Fandral. His name is Tindril. <laughs> Yeah, Hazel Bottoms up. Good morning. This way. You cannot change my mind. 
listen, they're different. One of them was more like, you know, feral, and the other one's more moonkin resto-y. <laughs> go in all the way down here. Oh yeah, Whelp Daycare, and then I want to do the Dream Surge weekly quest on Inksy. I also haven't done, um, oh, for heaven's sake, I haven't done the... Oh, you know what? I'm really close. I haven't done the um, the Time Rift weekly either, so I should go. That's like now, isn't it? Like top of the hour. <laughs> um, I still need cosmetics from Time Rifts. This is this is this is what I mean. I'm just getting I'm just getting overwhelmed here, but I'm really close, and it's like exactly 10 a.m. So we should be able to just zip on down here and do something about it. Still working on Time Rifts too. I took a big break from them when Hardcore came out. Um, I also wasn't going hyper hard at the beginning. I was just kind of going all right. I know I have an encapsulated destiny on this character though, so we'll get something for this. So pick up the weekly and then I'm reporting for duty and then I'm going to get into a DPS spec so we can do something. Rotted gladiator slain. You betcha. <laughs> what do you mean there's too much to do? <sighs> this one's just time sensitive. I really wanted to just kind of finish one thing before I start the next one, but this one is up now and it won't be up later, so... I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this and then we'll go back. We'll remember where we were, definitely. Oh I I can't uh, beacon right now. We'll have to go back. Finish getting two hundred tokens for the goggles. That's what we were doing. Why is it called top of the hour? I mean if you think of an analog clock, um it's pointing at the highest point whenever the hour begins. Slash ends, you know, hand pointing up. I don't know, I just made that up. But it sounds it sounds plausible. <laughs> also, there are really are not people here. I kind of thought there was going to be more people here. Um, this hurts. Ouchie, owie, oof. <laughs> Did a lot when encapsulated destiny wasn't, destiny wasn't used up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which I think time rifts. Oh, you wished you were time rifts for every 30 minutes. We'll probably do them more often. Yeah. I think at least. I don't think I'm crazy far from having. Well. Oh, you know what? Uh, the other reason I should keep doing them on, my, on this character is my old main is just because she's the one that's like partly done Sword Army rep. And there was some reason I wanted to finish Sword Army rep, right? What is it you get for being um, 5 of 5 after another 18,000 rep here? There must be something I need from that. At least they made it so that you can, um, they made it so that you can do these, even if there aren't a lot of people around. I think that maybe you won't get like all three boxes. I don't think we're getting the purple boxes anymore, but you can at least like kill the bosses. Those should scale. We'll see. There's a title? Mm. Being a librarian made me realize that younger generations can't read analog clocks. I mean, I'm 31 and I had a hard time with analog clocks as well. I mostly learned them out of spite because I feel like somebody told me that I couldn't. And uh, they were correct, but it made me upset. <laughs> they, um, there, there wasn't really a whole lot of incentive for me to learn them for a long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm no Gen Z. Just a title? Okay. Well, then maybe I won't worry about it so much. Unless it's like a really cool title. Hopefully an account wide title? Like real motivating factor in life. <laughs> yeah, can you guys just do me a quick favor and just tell me that you don't believe in me, and then um, and then maybe I'll accomplish something with my life out of spite. You're never gonna be able to afford a house. You're never getting your schedule together, and uh, you're never gonna bake those chocolate chip cookies that you've been talking about baking for like a week. <laughs> it's not happening. Title is the unparalleled. That is good. That is pretty good. More tokens after doing Elix and Inns? Corrin Daily? Corrin Daily's good, and when you turn in the first... When you turn in the very first uh, quest item, that's worth 40. Um, there's more dailies. There's two dailies in Veldraken, and then there's more dailies down at Brewfest. There's also a one-time quest that you can start at the actual Brewfest thing for... Um, Pink Elix on Parade. You go zap Elix in front of a couple of different capital cities. That's worth 40 tokens. 
But I would, if you have alts, I would recommend just getting 200 that you need to like buy a thing on a specific alt and then doing those same activities on another alt. So I'm hitting up the ends on a couple of different characters. You're never going to collect everything in ADT. No, that's just true. <laughs> that's not spite. That's just a fact. <sighs> I don't believe you're getting to level 60. That's the motivation behind turning on gambling and HC streams so you can spite the doubters. It does, I'm not gonna lie, it makes me a little bit happy whenever I do like a kind of scary poll, right? And I'll be I'll be paying attention to it so I won't be reading chat. And I finish the poll and then I look at chat and it's just a wall of people saying, RUN! <laughs> that makes me feel kind of cool. Oh, nobody outspites ATT. Um, what do you want? Old God Invaders, Scourge Invaders? Oh, fill the hourglass, you betcha. So I think, yeah, like, uh, in, in collecting-wise, I had just finished the Thaldrazis ones. There we go. But I needed to do basically the other three zones worth. <laughs> Nothing gets your audience invested like near-death experiences. <sighs> oh, man. I was playing, um, I, I, we did some warrior priest duo last night off stream uh flabby and i were level like 13 ish now on a pair of dwarves and it's so fun because it's very different than playing solo on a pet class a warrior priest i've discovered is crazy strong and hardcore for doing big pulls because you're not gonna the warrior's damage is improved by fighting a lot of things they're gonna get more rage gen by having a lot of different things hitting them. And as a priest, assuming that I don't shield him and I just heal him instead, I can keep him alive while he gets all that rage so that he can then dump all that rage and all of those things. Meanwhile, I'm also like multi-dotting and wanding. And we can do the most bonkers pulls. It's so funny. We, we got up to the Mur Murloc camp um, in Elwyn and we were like, what if we just go to the middle? <laughs> We would do we would pull like five, seven, ten Murlocs at a time, or like nulls by Hogger. We farmed Hogger like four times just for fun. It was um it was excellent. It was so it was so good. It's very different. There's a there's a very real distinct possibility that I get into trouble in my warlock if I've been playing the priest duo too much, and I get too used to doing those big crazy pulls, and then I try doing them on my own, and then I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> It's not the same, especially because um, Flabby's warrior is named after my warlock's Voidwalker, so they're both called Helgrave. And I'm gonna be like, but Helgrave can always tank this. Oh wait, <laughs> this isn't Flabby on a warrior. Turbo leveling, best combo, it's awesome. It's so powerful. I think eventually we might find scary pulls, but like it's, it's, um, it's been, it's been great. Uh, and it's like so much faster. I think it'll slow down eventually, but it's so much faster to level when you can do those big huge pulls like that and you can kind of keep up with quests that are a little closer to your level without feeling like you're in danger. Any and all time ripped enemies for 32. 30. I wonder if they'll get to the, the purple box with this one. Surprising amount of people still doing time rifts. I appreciate that. <laughs> Not dead yet. Even more fun when you get scary pulls and end up making it through. Yeah. It's funny because we'll be doing one of those big pulls you know, we'll get like six wolves on us or something like that. And we make nearby people panic. Like, people will jump in and try to help you because they think that you've done it on accident and that you're gonna die. <laughs> and you get, you know, just like random passing by like mages and rogues and stuff. Just like, ah, survive. Don't die, insect. <sighs> also, being a priest feels amazing because not only can I hit people with those juicy, juicy stand buffs, I can save them. Um, if somebody's like, especially in Elven Forest, there's a lot of people around level five or six in caves where they sh they maybe shouldn't be yet, just at like a third health, and I can just throw a lesser heal on them, or even just like a buff and a uh, and a renew, and I can totally <laughs> save someone's bacon, and it feels I feel powerful. Uh, Marmo, thank you for the 52 month reset. Hello, hello. 
I always use all my mana whenever I'm just running to anywhere because I want to I want to give fort buffs to everybody. Uh, yeah, I've got an encapsulated destiny up currently. I think I have another one in my bags that I can use after I get this one done too. Priest and I did the elite quest in Silver Pine yesterday. My warrior it was lovely. My UI scale is different in Classic compared to Retail, and switching back to this makes this feel small. <laughs> I don't know if I'm fitting more information on my screen and it needs to be smaller, or if I should just kind of blow up my UI scale a little bit. But, um, they make my eyes feel pinchy. <laughs> <sighs> Thought I clicked on the wrong screen. Wait a second. Just checking in on Retail, seeing how it's going over here. There's an irritating amount of things that are still tying me to this, um, to this character when I want to, like, you know, cut ties and switch mains, but I'm halfway through a couple of different grinds, like Sword Army Rep, like Whelp Daycare. I'm halfway through a few different things that I really should finish on this character. <laughs> How much gold do I have? 5.9 mil. Okay. So I got, oh, I hate it when that happens. My encapsulated destiny gave me a paracausal fragment trinket, which I absolutely don't need. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. Do I have another one? Yeah, I do. We've also got two boxes that we can open. I got another one. So I've got one up for next time and then another one in the bag for next time. So at least we've got a few of those. I also got a dilated time capsule, but I'm pretty sure I don't need any more mogs from those things that you can buy for him. And then in terms of um, flakes, we've got 2100 flakes. But it's something. I wonder if I'm going to try and spend all of my gold before the next expansion again. I love doing that. It's such a bad idea. Like, it's so much. If you want to start making gold in a fresh expansion, you really want to have seed capital. And I don't want to. I want to make it all fresh. I want to pick a new flower and be like, oh my goodness, that's 30 gold for me. <laughs> so much more fun that way. Auctions. Sell a fishy. <laughs> Sell a battle pet. 200k. Very special deal. 48 hours. 200k. Thank you. <laughs> that was almost a really good deal. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I was collecting tokens to buy... I was collecting tokens. I have two of these um, dilated time capsules. And they're pretty much only... Oh yeah, I can also turn in. That's right, I can turn in my I weekly. I will be here. That gave me another, so I've got two bonus encapsulated destinies. An extra thousand paracausal flakes, and... Commendation letter. I don't know if I'm gonna get Sword Army finished. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps. So I'm sitting on 3,000 flakes then. So that is enough to buy like a mount or something like that. Um, or I could buy transmogs so that there's more more likely to get a mount from the guaranteed thingies. Perhaps? Yeah, I think I'm gonna buy mogs. We'll get it all eventually, I'm sure. What is it that we don't have yet? I do not have the heart slicer. Oh, these aren't fun for me. That's kind of cool, actually. The two-hander. 1,000. I have Doom Rubble, right? Yeah, I have Doom Rubble. Don't give in to the power of religion. My life is dedicated to destroying the good religion. Yeah, I haven't got the mounts. What is it? Do items disappear off the vendor once you've learned them? 
Like if I buy this pretty sweet axe, and I learn them, it's a bone gill great axe. It does. Interesting. That's nice. <laughs> Appreciate that. <sighs> All right. Uh, one more. I mean, these are pretty cool. It binds to Blizzard account, so even if I can't learn it, I can mail it to somebody that can. Oh, I do have to mail it to somebody that can. That's something. Okay. All right, we can do that. We are going to stop. Stop by Vildrakken. Mail that off to one of my hunters. Thinking about how they implemented after I already bought it all. I do like the satisfaction of, like, cleaning the vendor of all of their options. That is kind of nice. Trying to sell, like, 150 X's pets taking so long, so tedious to list them. Yeah, that pets and transmog are both markets where you have to be really patient. And I don't always have that kind of patience. Crinkle. Crinkle can, can learn that. One thing I wanted to do... I'm getting too distracted. I need to get my, my tokens for the goggles! I wanted to do an auctionator scan, and I wanted to see what the Dracophist is like. Okay. If I look at my alchemy... Animal conversion. Oh yeah, there's still some profit in these things. That's kind of nice. I wonder what the. I wonder how hard it is to sell them. Even um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Potions of power. Really? That doesn't seem right. Those must be inflated. Um. I wanted to know. Tepid versa barely profitable. Dracothist. Yeah, no. Dracothist totally crashed. Yikes. Jinkies. Okay. Back to back to Brewfest token farming. We're going to the waking shores. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump off the top of the thing like I told myself to. Why am I not using my new Drake customization? <laughs> I guess I, I like the um I like the we've got like the Highland Drake Um in infinite scales, which is pretty cool. From the Dawn of the Infinite Dungeon, but be pretty neat. Be pretty neat to um to use the uh, the Sarkareth one too. I can't believe it's Sunday already. This week went so fast. <laughs> I think I might feel better about retail if I can just get some real clarity on what <laughs> what I'm working on at any given time. That's one of the worst things about coming back to games, and I think one of the reasons why I like, I really like um, starting fresh in RPGs. Like, if I had, like, a, a Game Boy and I had, like, an old Pokemon save file on it, and I pick it up, like, three years later, it doesn't matter how close I was to catching them all last time, I will always prefer to delete that file and start a brand new one because I've, like, lost my thread in it. I don't know what's going on. I don't remember what I was working on. There's too many different endgame things pinging around. It's way more fun to start completely fresh and then to have more cohesive, smaller <laughs> goals to work on, I suppose. And I get like that in WoW, too. This whole month feels fast. Tell me about it. Weekends are so short. <sighs> October is coming. It'll be spooky season. I don't really dress up, but I had an idea of if I found a pair of, like, bumblebee wings that I could just clip onto the harness that my dog already wears when I'm walking my puppy. Doesn't have to be bumblebee wings, but those would be pretty cute. <laughs> Moose antlers! Yeah. <sighs> antlers would have to go on the head, though. I mean, I guess I could put them on his back. I just don't want him to wear anything that he doesn't already have to wear. <laughs> Especially because he will get it off and he will eat it. I was coming home this morning from a run. And I was saying hi to him. And he took an AirPod out of my ear and then took it over to his bed. And thankfully when I asked him to drop it, he did. And I and it was fine. But 
he um he took it out of my ear and just like walked away like all right this is for me thank you i'm going to the dragon skill base camp pumble moose have you started dressing moose in clothing no when i first adopted him he had like a little handkerchief around his neck and it was really cute and i have not put him in anything similar um no i'm, I'm not i'm not a big dressing up the, bo the dog person he is really cute though <laughs> you still enjoy retail well i think so i just need to get my bearings again at least he didn't eat it i think he wanted to eat it <laughs> i'm glad he didn't swallow it Oh, I'm lucky that dog seems to have an iron stomach. He seems to be able to just kind of pass basically anything that he eats. Not that that's an excuse to let him eat anything, but... Uh, have you ever had to put your hand in his mouth to get something out? Yeah. Yep. And sometimes um, there's the two-person job of one person helps open his, his jaws if it's something that he really wants, and then the other person fishes out the thing. You only have to do that if it's something that he really doesn't want to drop, but every once in a while, like in the, the chicken bone incident... You cannot let him eat it, and he does not want to drop it because he's like, "This is I found a chicken bone. This is the best thing in my entire life, and you have to get it out of there. But you got to be careful. My sister once had to get um, reconstructive surgery on one of her fingers because she had an incident like that where she was um, retrieving a dead crab from the mouth of her dog, who's like a super sweet dog, not aggressive or anything, and just by accident while trying to fish out this crab, um, her finger got like mangled. So you gotta, it's, it's a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> do with caution. <sighs> I want, um, this thing. That's unfortunate, yeah. It has given me a healthy fear of putting fingers into dog's mouth when dog also has food item in their mouth. It's not that they're trying to bite you, it's that they're trying to eat the thing that they've got in their mouth. I want, um, the biting is incidental, but also still very dangerous. I want to go to the Onaran Plains. We're sitting at 145 tokens, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 should do it. Hmm. Sharp things dangerous, noted. <laughs> oh, Moose is getting his um, adult teeth in, and he's just had a couple of bottom molars come in. And I guess teeth don't grow, right? Like they're enamel, they are the size that they're going to be. And they look so big in his mouth right now. I think his mouth still needs to catch up. These new molars are just like huge, like chunks of... Uh, <laughs> they're massive. <sighs> they're all shiny and white. I brush his teeth every night, but I still feel bad that eventually they're probably going to get at least stained. I don't know what stains dog teeth. They're not out here drinking coffee or wine um, or tea. So like, I don't know why they always end up brown, even if you brush them. I want to get up the hill. You know what? I'm a drac there. There we go. That's much better. Staining is genetic. That's what the vet said about my childhood dog. Mm, okay. I think the best I can do is just make sure I brush his teeth every night and then... Um, you know, get his teeth checked and or cleaned as per the vet's recommendations, and then that's that's all you can do. I just, uh, I want to take good care of them. They're so shiny and pretty and new right now. <laughs> he just got them. Hmm. All right. And Marukai. People... Unsure if people have malicious intents posting work orders with that materials or just careless. I think probably both. And it's impossible to know how much of column A and how much of column B. You can, if it's consistently the same person, you can ignore them so that you no longer see their work orders. If you're looking at their work order screen, you press a little drop down button to the side of their name. You are able to um, hide that user from that character so that you don't see their work orders. I've had to do that for a few people on the server. I'm going... So it's over here, but it's inside of the little building. Over here. Haha. Uh -huh. Easier to do the second time around. Need supplies. My goods will serve you well. I think I must have had... Yeah, I'd had Leatrix um, quest automation turned off for some reason. And then the shady terrace. Work orders intimidate me. How do I know how much I should tip or pay? It's hard. <laughs> I never liked that either. I usually estimate on the high end and then my friends make fun of me for it. 
Uh, the Leatrix quest automation makes it so that a quest will be automatically picked up if you open chat with a NPC that has a quest, and it'll be automatically turned in if you have that, that quest finished. Uh, so you'll see when we get to the, the bar tab for the next one. It just makes it much faster to pick up and turn in quests. You just go click on the NPC and then it's done. You don't have to confirm through the quest window. If you wanted to read quest text, which is probably what happened, they probably wanted to like read a few quests in the Heritage Armor quest lines, then it's no good. You would need to use a you know, it'll, it'll basically close itself before you have a chance to do anything. But it is great if you're just questing, especially through things that you've done a million times before. You just click on it, turns it in, done. Moving on. <sighs> Next week is the start of the Timewise event. Hmm. Go to Ascara. Hazel, does Rye the Bark share spawns with like Ock and Bloom? Looking for Inferior's Rye the Bark. Should I be gathering other spawns to try to get Rye the Bark? That's a good question. I don't know. Um, obviously, there's certain spawn points. Like you're more likely to find Bubble Poppy along rivers. You're more likely to find Rye the Bark in like forests um, near trees. I've always kind of wondered if there's like a set amount of like herbs per zone though. Um, because it does seem like, especially if um, no one's really herbing. Bloom that it becomes overwhelming. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna overload this. I haven't seen a decayed herb in a while. I also probably wasn't going to use my overload otherwise, so. <sighs> so we got four rousing decay and then another 10 rousing decay. And those are worth like 22. So it's like 220 gold plus the saxifrage. Also some coalescence. I didn't know you got coalescence for herbing in the zone. That's kind of neat. <laughs> apparently I have a apparently I have a story to turn in. I was really excited by those stories early in the expansion when I was working on Iskara rep and I've really gone off them. <laughs> They keep telling me to go talk to the Tuscar, and I'm like, listen, they've seen me, they've seen they've seen it all, they've heard it all. They should be no longer impressed, and if they're still impressed, I'm judging them a teeny tiny bit. Okay. And then the Bartam barrel. And then Camp Antonidas, and then Nowhere, and that should give me, yeah, that'll give me the tokens that I need to buy the goggles. And then we really are done, and then we really do have everything, because I know I have the, the cosmetic gear. I'm actually going to flight path. <laughs> I'm that lazy. I'm going to flight path myself up to Camp Antonidas because there's a big elevation gain there and I sometimes lose. Sometimes I just lose. I lose the game. <laughs> game over. Job done. I will be right back. Alrighty. Okay, we are close to finished with another goal. We're almost we're almost there. I just need to do this one, this bar tab barrel, the one at Camp Nowhere, and then we go back to Veldrak and we buy the goggles, and then we really are I wouldn't say done with Brewfest, because we could still do the daily corn dire brew thing, but I'm just gonna do it once per day, I think, is my <laughs> is my move. Uh, Camp Nowhere this way. True anti-social gold making, having 20 else doing gold world quests in the mall. That was pretty good. Even just dragon races, man. If you like dragon races and you don't mind doing them on alts, that'll get you pretty far. <sighs> I like that Dream Surges give you incentive to do to do world quests, like any world quests in their given zone. I miss emissaries making me kind of look at a zone and poke around and actually do the world quests again. And uh, this is the closest feeling I've gotten to that. I don't know why they, they moved away from that. What do they call it? Like a weekly rapper quest? How's Puppy doing? He's good. I got some loose pets. He's sleepy. He, uh, you pet him and he like rolls on his back to give you his tummy to get the tummy rubs. 
I get I get my fingers in like the neck fur behind his ears and I give him like the scritches and I give him little shoulder rubs and then he kind of like stretches and then I give him a smooch in the forehead. That's what you were asking, right? <laughs> this is information people wanted to know. I'm going to the bar tab barrel. That's the thing. Emissaries were great. I miss this. <laughs> yeah, he's a real sweet buddy. He's so he's so lovely. Even if he was like really unsightly he would still be the best dog because he's so sweet and he's not he's super cute he's a very handsome he's a very handsome good looking boy but i would love him anyways because he's just such an angel i'm going back to veldrak and that's what i'm doing wish the dream residue was a currency mm. I'll read all the puppy stories. <sighs> I want to... Oh, I should pick up my vault. What on earth did I even do on this character that would be vault worthy? I don't... It wasn't raid. Get something or another. You know what? That's transmog. I apparently have not collected that particular piece yet. So, job done. Those choices were unlocked more than a week ago. That's probably what happened. Alrighty. Mog for me. And then I didn't unlock any choices this last week. So All set to go. What else was I going to do? I did my vault. I wanted to do dragon daycare. Whelp daycare. I wanted to see where we're at with that. So let's untrack this. Um, we can turn this in. Oh, no, no, no. I haven't bought my thing yet. That's right. That's right, we are getting all scattered, so we turn this in. I've picked up both of these dailies that I do not need. I have a little scales daycare request on me already. Browse your goods. I would like to get those goggles XL. There we go. Add to the appearance. Those also share a couple of a couple of appearances. Nice. Just bought the mouth that you can't use in Dragonfly. Oh, nice. Mm. All right. What is going on with my quest log? There's a aiding the accord, which I guess I'll keep on me. Sarah Caverns. I don't even know what I was doing anymore. I got nothing. Alliance War Campaign. That's so I can teleport to Zoldazar when I'm farming Transmog. Uh, Trial of Valor. I was getting soul fragments for Transmog set. I guess I'm working on that. I'm Cindergosa, I'm not going, and I'm never going, and you can't make me. Same thing with Bane. Get out of here. We're not especially not in this character, but just not in general. I have Ashara? Couldn't tell you. Okay, alright. Um Welp Deco. Gather supplies for the Azure Hatchling's Nest. Oh that's right. We started this and then I just kinda didn't do it, so we need we have the Awakened Frost, we need a Fine Pointed Quill, and a Blue Dragon Bedtime Story. One of which is, we'll go start with the part that we know how to get to. How are you today? <laughs> Game's Hazel Nutty. I'm doing alright today. How are you, Scarlet? <sighs> Sundays are my Fridays, because um, I don't stream tomorrow. So I guess I could stay up late and... What do I stay up late doing? I stay up late and play hardcore. <laughs> Sleep in Sunday morning. I want to get outside, but I need to keep an eye on the weather. I think it's going to rain a great deal over the next, like, week or two. And I don't really want to go... You can hike in the rain? I don't know if that's really what I want to do. <laughs> I have taken my puppy out for, like, walks and play sessions in the rain. And he comes back like a mud demon. And then I get him with the towel and some damp water. And damp water? Only the finest damp water around here. And it, it helps. <laughs> You know, some people take mud baths. Maybe my dog is just taking mud baths. That's how he's going to get clean. <laughs> Moose have wet dog smell? If he's wet, absolutely. <laughs> uh, local nerdy thing store has a three book box set. For like $75. Must resist. But how much does the water weigh? <laughs> oh man. I want... I can live. Much better than powdered water. <laughs> Freeze-dried water. Fine-pointed 
quill. Fine pointed quill from what? I'm assuming I'm not here for the bedtime story. I could be here for the bedtime story. Did they say in the quest text? So the bedtime story's gotta be from Ascara, right? They do stories. Oh! <laughs> that me knowledge. A quill of his own to learn to write. And a bedtime story from Azure Span. That is not a very good description. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Hello. Thank you very, very much. I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm off to a good start today. I got out and I exercised, even though I also slept in. And it did make me five minutes late, but I think it's worth. What do they want me to do? I guess I could just start killing things. You know what I can do is I can wow head it. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's look it up. Scholars delight. No shame in not knowing where you're going. Kill and loot a snow spine snuffler in the area indicated in the Azur span. The porcupines. Okay, okay. All right. A snow spine snuffler. Oh, I see they were small. I gotcha. I gotcha. There we go. Oh, it's weird having AOE loot. I'm not used to it. I'm not used to it at all. Not all who wander are lost. I just made that up. There's a Lana Del Rey song from some album called Wanderlust where she uses that line. And I'm genuinely curious if she's actually like, if it's from, if she knows it's from Tokian or if she just heard it once and it was like, that's nice. I'm okay. We have the quill. Where's the bedtime story? Ah, uh, at the archives. I see. Listen, if somebody's gonna read me a bedtime story, I three dream search coalesces. Interesting. I would want it to be a Tuscar. <laughs> I just think they'd have a comforting presence. My pet collection has gotten behind. I have fallen behind in my pets in Dragonflight. I have 1,632 unique pets. I apparently have a bonus pet, like an extra one. Let me see. Uh, oh, I have an extra bonus bio here. I'll just delete that bit. Let's just release it. <laughs> Those aren't worth anything. I must have been... I got that, I guess, when I was farming Nax for... Um, I was farming Nax Ramus for that Paladin tier piece, which I'm pretty sure never did drop for me. It's one of my all the things random things. <laughs> I want Nostromo to read me a book. <sighs> I mean, you could get an audiobook and then imagine that it's Nostromo. <laughs> or you could see if the if the voice actor's done any any audiobook readings. Got a thousand pets and then stopped. Are there more milestones for it? Yes, they added a bunch more. Um, if you look in your pet collecting achievements, there should be... I think there's more than you can even do. Um, or maybe I did it. There's Violet Violence for 1,600 unique pets. That's maybe the highest one. I got that one in May. 1,600. Is that the highest one? 1,600? Didn't I say I had... Oh, no, I do I do have 1,600. That's right. I have 1,630, so I must have gotten that somewhat recently. <sighs> They've added a lot over the years. <laughs> it's like a Shaw of Anger thing. Or like a little baby Shaw-looking pet. It's a bit of a strange one for that milestone. I like this. Round beds always look so much better in video games than I feel like they would be in real life. I feel like it would be difficult to make the bed. It would be difficult to find sheets. But like, how cozy does it look? It's like having a nest. <laughs> I would set up my home in a way that gave me a nest. <laughs> Don't even really want to go to the World Lost Mounts anymore. That's fair. 
algorithms you can train in data to sound like people. I know that's a thing, but it freaks me out. <laughs> I want, um, what do I want? Oh yeah, we're going back to, uh, we're going back to Valdraken. I don't have any shortcuts there, do I? Oh, you know what? I do. Um, I can take a... Ah, oh, never mind. We'll just take a flight path. <laughs> I wonder if um, playing Classic has made me more inclined to make use of flight paths, or if I was always going to use them, and I'm just... Uh... Connecting it back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was Mr. Moose. Pretty, please? Oh, manga readers chat want to give me recommendations. Oh. I had more fun doing the world moss mounts one at a time. I didn't really like doing the the world tour where you go to a bunch of different like individual bosses and try them all. I wanted to take all the characters that I could and then try one boss, at, you know, at maximum a number of tries in the week and then and then work on it that way. And that was pretty fun for me. <sighs> Not taking a position how ethical legal it is. I think no, I th I think that's a fairly a fairly benign application of that technology. It just reminded me of the power of the internet and of technology to deep fake people and how horrifying that is. I wish they'd add the heirloom map item or something for dragon flights so and new characters could use the flight paths. Yeah, and they're with you. I would like that too. Plus just discovering the map. Although maybe it's just my fault for not being invested enough in my new characters to get them all that. But I know that uh, whenever I'm taking them all out to Karakta, that's always a bit of a, a bit of a thing, a bit of a problem. Hmm. Wish Renown was a count one. I wonder if they're gonna have me do a bunch more things after this, or if this is gonna be like the the thing for the day for the blue dragon. Still no rocked him out. I don't have mine yet either, but I found it was getting increasingly difficult to not only get groups like spawns of Karakta, but also to get people to help. Like maybe I would have Karakta up and I would list a group, and I would have a really hard time having people join that group off stream, mind you. But still, it's um. It's, there's, I think a lot of people are kind of done with that one, so there's a bit less interest. It's kind of entering that harder to do phase. I did not die in classic, no. I am 33 on my warlock, and then my hunter is still 26. <laughs> I'll join. <sighs> I think 34 is going to be a slow one, though. I think I'm just going to find myself a nice grind spot, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to farm. <laughs> I kind of want to save up. There's another blue wand that I kind of want to save for, and it's like 30 gold, and I can't use it for another couple levels, but if I could afford it by the time I get there, that might be kind of cool. Valdraken welcomes all. Um, okay. I want to make sure I'm doing these dailies when I need them for this achievement, but I think as long as I've done them at least once, then I'm fine. There is a third one. Blistering Bellastraza. Have I done Blistering Bellastraza for Whelp? There it is. I have done it. Okay, good. I don't need to do that one again. I remember that one was a bit tricky. Nest pieces placed. Hard to see, right? I remember these were a bit tricky to... You, you place them around maybe in the back, up on the shelf? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 gold like a third of a horse. What wand? I want to say it's Jaina's fire starter. I think. And then it also has some kind of effect that gives you like a bonus fire damage done. I'd have to look into it again. Glory to all there we go. I'm not doing off the page. But yeah, we've done all that we can today. Come back tomorrow, if you will. I think I'm on like the fourth of five dragons. With the Azur Hatchling here. Neat. Okay, so that's done. I did my I did my time rift. I did my whelp daycare. I did Brewfest twice. We got the shield and we got the goggles transmog. Plus we got the other goggles transmog. And now I want to do the weekly 
Dream Surge on Inksy for a free Worm's Crest that she can use to upgrade her gear. And then also for more coalescence that I'm saving towards the mount. And then there's like a pet or two. There's there's some cosmetics that I want. So I need coalescence for those. And I'm doing the weekly because um, for the free Worm's Crest. So we need to go back to Veldraken. Here, I'll also get into a, uh, a DPS spec here. If you want someone to come help you whenever you put up a group, at Battle.net. We'll only speak when spoken to if that helps. Oh, that's very, that's very kind of you. That's so expensive in the auction house. It's so much gold. It is a lot of gold. It's a lot of gold. Um, I don't know for sure that I would buy it, but if I could afford it when I get there and I don't need that gold for anything else, Warlocks are kind of handy because you don't need to save for your mount. You don't need to purchase a mount at level 40, unless I wanted to. If I really wanted to ride a Mechanist Rider instead of the Dreadsteed, but I'll probably just Dreadsteed around. Totally forgot about the Dream Surge pets. Uh, um, okay. How did I fail to get into Shadow Spec? Did I just get impatient to move on? <laughs> Alright, new main. What is my... How are my professions? My tailoring is at least at full skill. And I have at least blue gear in each slot. It's not full ranked blue gear, but at least it's blue gear. So she's got like the skill. My enchanting is 90 of 100. And then blue gear in each slot. Some pieces being better than others. Enchanting, I don't really know what it was that I was trying to, trying to do with this. My enchanting specialization is pretty bonkers. I'm really good at making... Um, rods and wands and an illusory goods so i can craft the toy cadgar's disenchanting wand which is a phenomenal toy i will say <laughs> it's a great toy um i also apparently maxed out draconic disenchantment don't remember doing that and then i guess i was working on i don't know what i've been doing honestly <laughs> i don't know where i'm putting those points in oh dear me okay what about um Recipes, cloth. Oh yeah, those are reasonably reasonably profitable. I should do like a full 30 rack of Azure Weave just to sell. Um, it's baseline profitable and then even more so with my gear and stuff on. Um, what if I simulate it with uh, with Insight? Does that, what does that do? Not a whole lot, okay. 253? Yeah, yeah it's about 250 per, okay. What is this quest in this in? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Best goods in the islands. Uh, Secrets of Azeroth, I see. That's another thing that's that I would like to eventually do, but I am fully tabling it for another time. I will look into that one day when I'm feeling ready. Azer Span had the dream surge. Yes, yes it did. Okay. Have leather working, don't see how to level it up. Past 75, even looked up guides. You should be able if you you probably need either special recipes from Re renowns or you need to make you need you need specialization points that unlock new recipes. There will be recipes that will give you skill ups. They might be recipes that take sparks. It might involve doing work orders or using like extra sparks from your alts. Or it might involve um, getting crafting recipes from like the the different um, renowned vendors. Mm. I'm going the wrong way. For secrets, you should close chat, do it off stream. Yeah, I think that's probably prob probably good. Last season sparks and alts are a good way to level the endpoints of props. Another good thing, another good trick, especially if you're doing it kind of slowly over time, is every time the Dark Moon Fair comes around, you can do your Dark Moon Fair profession quest, and that will give you a couple of skill ups as well as some knowledge points. So if you're in like those late skill ups that are like really annoying or expensive to do, it's nice being able to, super nice being able to just um, do a quick Dark Moon Fair quest and get a couple of points. Alrighty, I have coalescence wise, five hundred and seventy one. I'm saving for the mount first, I believe. And I want my weekly quest. I always just vote for whatever else everybody is already voting for. Goodbye. Next stream search starts in seven minutes, but we can certainly do some do some things in the meantime. 
Oh, I see. You get extra coalescence, but not the, the money bag for doing the dragon race. That's kind of annoying. <laughs> I want my 500 gold. No, I haven't done Secrets of Azeroth yet. Do orders for alts. Need to fill your specialization treats with farm for knowledge points. Mm -hmm. Wish crests and flight stones could be sent to count wide. I would like to see flight stone catch up be a bit more aggressive. I understand that you need fewer flight stones to upgrade gear on an alt once you've already like gotten that upgrade on your main. But I would like... Um, I don't mind alts needing to farm their own flight stones, but I would like it if it went faster, like just a, a, a flat buff <laughs> to um, a flat buff to flight stone generation after you have, I guess that's a good question, after you've done what? <laughs> what, would, what would delineate the main? But um, it would be kind of nice if they just earned them more quickly, because that can be a pain point when you're first starting a, a new alt. But I do like them needing to do it themselves because I don't want the very best way to gear my alt to be to not play it at all and just do stuff on my main who has much better gear and then send them stuff. Um, I want to be on the character. Okay. Good, good, good. Oh, there's this effusion camp over here too. Now that's not going to give Dream Search Coalescence. That's too many systems at once, right? <laughs> hmm. So the actual portal will be in a bit. We can just do world quest in the meantime. Hmm. What are my flight stones looking like? I have 1500. I've managed to spend them down enough that I'm not like in danger of capping. So Vision Camp mobs do drop coalescence. Oh, okay. But the quest itself. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Let's do... Mm. See if I remember anything at all about how to play Shadow Priest. <laughs> it's just such a different thing. <laughs> it's such a different game than Classic in so many ways. I like them both, but they are very much not, not even close to the same thing. Having mobs not tag is kind of freaking me out. I've been playing too much hardcore. needed that. I'm diseased, but I'm a priest? Question mark? Am I specting to purify disease? I'm not specting to purify disease. <laughs> I dislike that a tiny bit. I, I appreciate having utility buttons on the tree so that somebody that, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to have, but sometimes you just got used to having a utility button and then you've realized that your new spec doesn't include it and then you're like, but wait, but I'm a priest, what do you mean? <laughs> Recon Bravo, Recon Bravo, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, guys. Forgot when they took away mob tagging. <sighs> I think it is a better quality of life if you're just kind of questing and you're trying to, to get mobs, but there is something... With the lack of mob tagging, they have kind of other things going on where like a mob's health might dynamically scale based on how many people are hitting it. The experience that you get from a mob could be reduced due to somebody else tagging it, even though you didn't ask them to. There's more, it's a little more out of your control, even if it is largely a better quality of life. Switching back to priest, kind of thinking I might lean back into my druid, but the gear catch up. The story catch up after not playing your whole expansion. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. The gear, I'm not trying I'm trying not to worry too much about the gear because I figure I'll just get whatever I get done and then I will get new gear in the new season. You know, there'll be a big item level bump, I'll do new keys and new content and it'll be fine. But yeah, having a lot of the story quests are they're optional. And I might opt out of them, but they really are <laughs> everywhere. 
might do him just to clean him up. Yeah, it is a bigger item level bump. You're totally right than it was before. So, I think it's nice to get geared up before, like ahead of time, but it's certainly not necessary. Imagine how fit you would be if you did this all the time. <laughs> Bouldering where you have to fling yourself to each of them. Every single move is a jump. I remember the three times that I went to a bouldering gym. They would call the people, the climbers, that liked to leap to their... To their... Like, make leaping moves to conquer their climbs. Dinos. And I guess it's because they are... They are moving dynamically. But I just figured it was because they were like pterodactyls. <laughs> Screeching their way through the gym, leaping from thing to thing like a like a big old, big old dinosaur. I need... Um, I'm not doing good. <laughs> this isn't going well. I can't go up that way. I'm gonna go all the way across here. I might need to restart this one. Prefer the second option. <sighs> I thought it's because they're gonna go extinct. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm just not. I don't know where you're supposed to sit to interact with that one. Is this a gnome problem, or is it? I don't. I don't really understand. You'd think that this one is close enough to it. That one took me a minute. Sometimes they're just bugged. Yeah, I guess so. I think it'll kick me off pretty soon and then I can um, try a different, different direction. This one looks like it must be close enough. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I remember the, the are you kidding me? Which was a hilarious name for a chronically bugged quest. <laughs> That was pretty, that was pretty good. That seemed like cosmic fate. All right, two more, but I'm, I'm just gonna pop off the wall and start over. Get the last two on a fresh, fresh grip. It's cute that she holds a little rope in her hands. I just want it's 685 gold. That's kind of a lot of gold. I could probably do this and then open up the auction house and then find something really cute or just anything that's not that cute but that I don't know yet <laughs> and learn it for that amount of um for that amount of uh gold. Uh-oh. At least the um, the tech tree upgrades for this kind of thing are totally account wide. I appreciate that. What drew you back to your old fave? Cool new gear, priest changes that you're liking. Honestly, both good theories. Um, I I never look at class changes. I just play the class that's in front of me, and then I find out about changes when they're launched. I don't even I don't really read ahead on them. I figure it stresses me out too much. And then the gear is fine, but I mostly, it was, it was mostly, I really missed being a gnome. I wanted that, that comfortable feeling of being on the character that felt the most like me. And I was ready to not, I was, I was kind of in a bit of a salty rage quit mood regarding my old evoker main. <laughs> partly because of the legendary situation and partly because I, um, and then partly because of, uh, I was just ready to, to, to not play, not play a dragon anymore. I liked preservation, but I didn't really like being a drakthir. A lot like that too. I used to, to read up on and try to keep up with like all of the class tuning and balance. And over time, I feel like I eventually realized that things will get buffed and things will get nerfed and things will be good and things will be bad. And... It's like a never-ending ocean tide crashing upon the shore, and it really doesn't matter. You're always going to be able to play what you want to play. You're always going to be able to clear the content, you know. Assuming that you can get into groups and that you beat the, the social barrier boss, it's, it's it doesn't matter all that much. Um, what matters is if you're having fun. <laughs> if you're having fun in a class, and I'm just flexible enough, I guess, that I've never really felt 
like class changes have ruined my fun. I've always I've had like complaints here and there about aspects of a spec, and I am usually happy when they change those. But you know, I've played a lot of different versions of Shadow Priest, and I thought they were all fine. Okay. Couldn't play my druid as anything but an elf. Get not vibing with Drac there. Sometimes a class in a game is weirdly more fun than the right character species. Yeah. It's WoW is a game that I feel like you can really identify with your your character pretty strongly, especially when you spend so much time on them. And it just I liked my visage form, but I never quite connected with the dragon form. I guess I, I in in fantasy, I never really wanted to be a dragon. I wanted to have dragons or like be friends with dragons, you know. Aragon was the was the form formative years work there. <laughs> I didn't want to shapeshift into one, I just wanted to, like, have one look out for me. Reminds me of my hunter alt that's Adrena. She annoys me very much because she's not a night elf. Even when enhancement was bad, I loved it. Wasn't was fun, even if it wasn't a chart topper. Yeah. Yeah. And I measure my performance generally alongside the performance of other people in my general peer group. Which I don't hang out with cutting edge raiders really. Um, don't get me wrong, my friends are great gamers, they're great players, but I'm not in Mythic Guild. I'm not in a Mythic Guild. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know any world first players, um, so I'm not really judging my own parses or logs against that backdrop. I'm kind of judging myself against other people in the pugs that I enter. Um, I kind of look at where I sit in my guild and I try and make sure that I'm not, that I'm, you know, at least middle of the pack. It's and those are bars that you can do on any class if you um if you practice it a little bit. I get a lot of enjoyment out of seeing where my starting point in a patch is and then figuring out what can I do and how can I practice and optimize to get more performance out of the same character in the same class. And I like seeing my own like item level percentage parse go up. Um, that's the number that is really satisfying to me because it doesn't matter how well or poorly your class is tuned if you're competing against other people playing that same class or that same spec. Um, it's a it's a game of how much how much throughput or how much value can I get out of X Y Z thing, um, and then I'm not as worried about what everybody else is doing. Bellamy, thank you for the seven month threesome. <laughs> and then um, the other life lesson is never compare yourself to Flabby. <laughs> My bestie is uh, kind of a cracked gamer, and we just don't compare ourselves. It's just the, the the fundamental rule of being friends with Flabby is just don't worry about it. I got some Dreambound stuff to send over. I need another A16 coalescence. I'm going to go do that pet paddle daily. <laughs> it's a game of cat, and also cat. want to do well, but not making my whole gaming experience about being the best. That would burn me out. That's a good thing to know about yourself. I think that's great. I think that different people will have different kind of ways of getting fun out of games and different reasons why they play games. And I think it's nice that in WoW that you can have a bunch of different ways to do it that are all satisfying and that um, aren't necessarily the same thing. It gets them into trouble when they're designing the game because you're trying to design it for a bunch of different playstyles, but they do their best. <laughs> Drake Arrest, thank you very much for the three-month threesome. I have the ego of someone who's usually top in pugs and is bottom of the barrel in the friend group. <laughs> oh, man. It's relatable. A way to save dragon customization share with alts. It sounds like something that, that an add-on could do. I've not seen anything like that. I've not used anything like that. I just kind of customize my mains dragon, and then on my alts I press the randomize button, or I'll put like an all-over transformation on if I have one. Um, because I, I, it sounds like a good idea, though. How much cool lessons we get for that? I got 31 for doing the portal. 10. Okay. I'm happy with that. Let's go do the other dragon race. <laughs> I want to be like Flabby, but I still have a full-time job and eight animals, so I don't have the time. Eight animals? <sighs> Holy. It is a bright day with exceptionally favorable winds. A perfect day for a race. 
I guess I technically have eight animals, but five of them are fish. <laughs> six of them are fish. I have I have six. All right, nine animals. Six fish, a dog, a cat, and a snail. <laughs> Didn't count the fish. <sighs> I'm actually um, pleasantly surprised and impressed that the fish are doing as well as they have. Not because I doubt my skills as an aquarium keeper. I feel like I've learned a few things over the years and I've used the available knowledge. But I'm just always ha happy and satisfied whenever like it goes well, <laughs> so to speak. I had a lot of experiences early in aquarium keeping where I would have done all the research and done all the practices and done the cycle and tested the water and tracked the pH and the temperature and the nitrate levels and then you know make sure your ammonia and your nitrites are zero and you know you've done the plants and like I would do everything right as far as I could make out and I would still have fish just randomly die and it would stress me out so much so whenever I have fish and they're just like good and I've had them for like a year or more I'm just like good job guys appreciate it <laughs> shout out to you for being alive even captain my one-eyed fish he's a cherry barb he's got one eye he was swimming kind of funny when I first brought him home, and I thought, oh no, he's not going to make it. And he's made it. He's been around for a year and a bit now. <sighs> what is the snail's name? Sam. Sam the Nerite snail. Sam the Nerite snail. <laughs> Shaping the dream switch. Oh yeah, we can turn that in. You know this about me? Four dogs, four cats. I will caution and say that I um, I don't remember a whole lot. I I enjoy I enjoy chatting, but I have a terrible memory when it comes to specific details. Some things will stick, and a lot of things will just kind of go in one ear and out the other, or especially through stream in one eyeball and then and then and then drip down my face. <laughs> It'll see him. I wonder if I would have a, a resurgence of fish keeping, like more fish keeping or more tanks if I had uh, like a home where I wasn't trying to clear it with a property manager or if I would just accept that right now I have kind of like a, like the, I have one 10 gallon tank, it's in harmony, <laughs> it's going well, uh, it's fairly low maintenance, um, the water like levels are good, there's a lot of plants growing out of it so the water changes are mostly just to make sure that the mineral content's all right, like the um, the nitrates get pretty much eaten up by all the plants that are in there, and the plants growing out of the back of it. That's the real secret is um, is having having terrestrial plants grow out of the back of it so they can take advantage of the atmospheric carbon as opposed to having to inject carbon because nobody's got time for that. Um, but would I do more aquariums or would I just be like, you know what, the one was nice. <laughs> also, I have a dog now, so I have a lot more work to do. <laughs> Two hours late. How you doing, Hazel and Chad? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I want turn this in, and then the chrysalis. I can get. A worm's crest. You get one worm's crest per week for the chrysalis, which is kind of nice. Can also get more worms crests if I decide to actually do keys, but <laughs> let's not get let's not get crazy now. How are we doing on coalescence? I have six hundred and eighty-seven coalescence. Oh, We're saving up. We're saving a thousand for the Ohuna, and then I I do want the toys and the pets, so that's gonna be a while. <laughs> that's gonna be a project. Farewell. I should probably do it outside of the weekly, but. I mean, that's 690 gold right there. <laughs> Aquariums are like tattoos. Very addictive. Can't just have one. Mm. My, my puppy likes watching the fish in the aquarium. <laughs> Not all the time, but every now and then he notices the motion and he's like, oh. Brady. Like flying around getting the green orbs. If I had herb on this character, I would I would just herb in the zone for it. That seems like a nice chill thing that I could just kind of mindlessly do for a long time. I know that rares will help. Like you can, I could go do like the various rares, and those would give me coalescence. Hmm. The strong hinges of three poles lookout forgot to order supplies again. We need someone to hunt and gather to keep the place going. 
Ready to get the Drake skin? Looks awesome. I will check and see for a second what which one I was using. I was on... I don't know which one I was on. I'm summoning random ones. This one is from Sarkarath. But it could have been an infinite dragon skin too. Excited for Blitzcon? Yeah, it'll be fun! I'm watching from home this year. I'm not going in person, but I'm excited to I'm excited to watch the uh, the streams. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna spend my six hundred and ninety gold on, but I'm very excited. <laughs> When is BlizzCon this year? November. I think it's basically the same time it is every year. I've forgotten the dates though, off the top of my head. <laughs> They're posted somewhere, they did announce it. Somebody in chat will know. I betcha, I believe. They've got this one. I don't think virtual tickets have gone on sale yet though. They did say this year the entire convention is going to be streamed free, so the virtual ticket is more if you want the digital goodies. Um, I don't think that they're paywalling like the panels this year. I think they're just going to stream the whole thing. November 11th? Four to six. November 4th through 6th. November 3rd and 4th. That's three different answers. <laughs> I gotta Google this. All right, all right. Let me, let me, BlizzCon 2023. Friday, November 3rd, Saturday, November 4th. There we go. <laughs> it is the 3rd and the 4th. That's right. Check out the gear for the new zone. Super Bloom events, extra druidic for every gear type. Well, that's cool. I'm sure we'll have lots of collecting to do. <laughs> I will at some point I don't know when the season's ending nobody does but I'm gonna have to have a phase I'm gonna have to have a Hazel just goes ham on um, solo shuffle phase I need to get my vicious wars now maybe I'll do one today just to remind myself how it works I wish you got even a tiny bit of progress for losing not that I want to throw but sometimes, oh man, if you just go on a big losing streak and you feel like you've made no progress for like 45 minutes of your time, it's at least I'm a healer. I don't have to contend with DPS keys for solo shuffle, which makes a huge difference. Thelazra, thank you very much for giving out a gift, so. I just, uh, I'm going to have to do it on stream, I think, unless I start streaming it and I get really frustrated because I don't realistically see myself doing it off stream and I know I want to do it. <laughs> If I'm off stream and I'm gaming, I'm just going to want to set myself up on classic hardcore and just like grind ogres in a cave. <laughs> Wish so bad we could have retail graphics and zones with classic gameplay and difficulty. I don't know if the graphics really get me down that much when I'm playing classic. <laughs> I don't know if it's just nostalgia or what, but um, I've been kind of enjoying the atmosphere of the different zones. This world quest is taking me much longer than I had in mind. Okay. Mm hey, Jeff, you're right. You're still right. I need to remember that. <laughs> Makes you realize how beautiful retail zones are. They really are gorgeous. I always really enjoy them at the start of the expansion. Collect thick bear fur. What time is it? 20 after 11? <laughs> Maybe I'll try that after this. Because I'm not grinding out like an entire uh, entire mount from Dream Search Coalescence. <sighs> I 
I should figure out what my plan is for collecting the Dream Surge cosmetics. Like, what am I doing one per day? Am I doing one per week for the weekly? Do I want to just keep all of the world quests clear? Do I want to just kind of, like, grind out, like, flying through the orbs for it? Like, what's my... <laughs> it doesn't seem hard to get, but I would just... I kind of want a plan. I need to figure out what sounds fun for me. Got two stories that we can turn in. Weekly and alt's good for Mog. Hmm. Is the weekly available in alt? For some reason I had an idea that you could only do it once per week on any character. I don't know why I thought that though. Get home from work, make a brew, realize you have no milk. Oh, I'm so sorry. Or like your milk is spoiled. Is what do you do? Do you go out for it? <laughs> I used to make a habit of anytime I traveled, I would travel with tea bags and a foldable electric kettle in my luggage. And, and of course my, my teacup. And then the first thing I would do when I had wheels on the ground and I was loose in whatever city I was visiting is I would find a place to purchase milk and I would bring it back and I would put it in my hotel fridge, which was never quite cold enough. But um, I would get basically all set up so that I could make myself a nice cup of tea in my own hotel room. And that always made everything better. <laughs> I thought that too, but it isn't. Maybe it was and they changed it or maybe we just had a collective hallucination. <laughs> I did finish the winter furball grip. I have all of that done, at least. All right. I've seen things that would scare you have anything mm. ancient to trade? Needs to be at least two Can you transmog? Hmm. I want that one. Goes with my goes with my my dress. All right, let's take her back to Valdrak, and we've done good. We did our whelp daycare. We did our brew fest activities. We did our dream surge weekly. We did our time rift weekly. Happy with all of that. Let's try a solo shuffle on on my on my solo shuffle character. Mind you, my add-ons are going to be a mess, and I haven't played this in months. But that's fine. We'll just make it up. <laughs> oh, I need to hide that shirt. Had a hunter ninja the scarlet leggings for my hardcore pally. Oh no! <sighs> hunter loot. Let's see. I'm going to hide her shirt. She's got Precious's ribbon on, so she's got to wear it for the buff. But I want to uh, hide the appearance. I also want to hide the cloak, yeah. Do I not have boots that go with this set? Obsidian Gladiators. Oh, you know what? I don't. I don't have boots that go with it. Here, I'll put her in, in little sockies <laughs> for now. Um, I haven't gotten all the, uh, all the PvP transmog just yet. She has crafted PvP boots in that slot, which is why. How is my gear? Um, uh, my PvP item level is 446. Um, 450 would be the quote-unquote cap, so it's not too bad. She needs a new cape. Um, does she have a vault? I'm sure she doesn't, but does she have a vault? She looks good. Mm. Uh, the PvP gear is from the Conquest vendor and then the Honor vendor <sighs> in Valdraken for PvP currencies. How are my currencies doing? We have 565 Conquest. The Honor, I think, is a bit um, arbitrary right now. Not needed. And then my Vicious Mount progress was at 27%. 27%. Does she have a vault unlocked? No. I have done nothing. <laughs> All right. All right. Send, send me in. Call to arms healer. Bonus rewards. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna tab over to the quiet thing. Hope that my add-ons are intact. Hope for the best. We'll make it up as we go. Glad that honor can be traded in for marks. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. I should, um... I don't remember what the honor cap is. What is the honor cap? Three sets of dice ordered. Bits for making a character journal type thing. Nice. Okay, we have markers. I'm gonna need no friendly nameplates just so that the markers are bigger. My keybinds are good, that's good. Tar I use scroll wheel targeting so I can target A or B. I don't remember a thing about my rotation. Something about life bloom on me and my target, and then, um, what do we have? Iron bark, tree of life, buff. Alright. <laughs> Hope for the best. Realize the pink's gone? It's, um, there's a tiny bit of, like, grape purple on the very tips, but probably Tuesday I'm gonna buzz it down just a little bit and then re-bleach and re-dye re and see what kind of color we end up with. I'm not super happy with my current tube of pink dye. It's a bit too, f it's a bit too purple for me, but, um, I'm gonna <laughs> try it again and, uh, See if it grows on me if I if I start from like a lighter lift. And if not, then I'll look into something else, but I've got lots of it. I'm nothing if not cheap. So the shaman is the circle. And there's the death knight. Oh jeez, I need um Gladius. I don't have Gladius on. Or Omnibar? Or big debuffs. This is a, a new level of not add-ons for me. So the healer is named... I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure out who my focus target is. I typically will do like offensive CC and stuff via focus target. The healer is the paladin. The paladin's name is Sicily. There we go. I have the healer in my focus now. Assuming that I can help this person survive. Maybe I can peel for them. Nothing. <laughs> Waiting for the Warlock Fell Green incarnation of Hazel here. Yeah, let's see. Can I at least get Gladius? <laughs> Someone bought every Wildercloth bag in my realm's auction house. There were so many. How? And then we'll look into big debuffs and uh, Omnibar next time. But you're right, if we do lose, we're just bringing the MMR down to make the games easier. <laughs> so I've got a Death Knight on square. My um, focus is a bit tough here. All I want is to focus the healer! Ay, 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 ay. Because if I can't focus them... Here, let's right-click them. That, that'll work. I can't even... Um, there we go. That's something. Made him pop a trinket. They killed somebody. Good job. <laughs> How's the queen doing? I have um, bad news. <laughs> Thoughts on the idea of cataclysmic? 
I I think it's kind of a not a non not a thing for me. So I don't really get a take on it, but it gives me the heebie jeebies. I want um Omnibar. Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> I should have checked my add-ons. That was really goofy of me. Oh well. Hmm. At least our at least my healing buttons are working okay. I can you can focus via right clicking Gladius. I just um I don't love it. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> this really goofy. Oh, I, I like I, that meld I was very pleased with. I was satisfied with the shadow meld, and then I came out of it and started doing a Scooby-Doo chase. Ah, he's gone. Hmm. Do you think they should allow Rated Solo Shuffle in the coming Rated Solo QBG Brawl thing to gain glad? Give lower skill players... I mean, yeah, but I don't. I don't know that it would really make a difference. Looks like they're not on the Death Knight. I see the trap behind me. Good job, team. <sighs> Alright, we got two chances to win at least one, and if we do, we'll get some progress on this. <sighs> this is such an ugly mess. I wonder why my um my focus I wonder if I'm just hitting the wrong modifier. My focus macro was not quite not quite doing it for me. Or maybe it's a keybind. Thanks for the fun streams, great YouTube videos. Reset to WoW. Well, thank you very much, Casey. Been a while since they've been able to catch you stream. Welcome. Hope everything's alright at work. That's gonna get me out. getting purged. Nice. Hey, we did it! <laughs> Good job, team! I do have Invincible. <laughs> I do have that mount.
prefer Classic Plus, but it Blizz makes money. I don't think they care. I just don't know if it would make money. I feel like they've got like these two separate things with Classic and Retail, and I think that it's in their best interest to keep them very distinct in vibe. And I think Cata Plus, like Classic, Cataclysm Classic, maybe not Classic Plus, but Cataclysm Classic, would just make Classic 2 retailified, and they already have that, you know? They don't... I don't think they need another one. Oh, that was a terrible shift out on my part. We don't we don't like that. <laughs> we don't love we don't love what, what we've done here. Sometimes just line of sight denial is as good as a CC. Ha 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 ha! Who needs this? Well, I mean, it worked a lot better with Gladius, but I was gonna say, who needs add-ons? There we go. We got some conquests. We got fourteen hundred honor points. We got some rating, unbelievably. Um, there must have been some inflation or something. <sighs> Hi, come on, we'll save us. <laughs> Hmm. Okay. And then we also got our bonus box. Extra stuff. Lots of Shadow Flame Residue Sacks. I don't really need those. How is my Conquest doing? Can I buy a, a cloak? That's what I really want. I've got a blue cloak still. Um, so if we can get ourselves like a lovely um, cape, that would be helpful. But that brought my... That brought my... Um, up to 29%. <laughs> 20, 29%. Also, if I can maybe like sort out the rest of my UI and and shape up a little bit and I get to 1800, that's going to be some extra cosmetics available. And then of course I'll have to do at least one more to get to get vault options. So I'll, I'll do some of that. Maybe I will do some of Well, off stream. Well, ugh. I don't know about that. How much do they want for a cloak? 525? Perfect. We can do that. That's haste versa. Uh, I like versa mastery. It's good for throughput. Um, haste is also good for throughput. Two fifty nine, two seventy seven. I had versa mastery before, but is it just because it dropped for me? Haste versa. I've kind of gotten a bit of both. What was I gemming? I was enchanting versa, of course. Yeah, I'll take the one with more versa on it. That's fine. I'm I'm not a gladiator, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just exciting that it's a. Uh, that it is a new appearance, new transmog. Wow. Would you look at that? I got a cape. Magnifaction, thank you for the brand new set. Appreciate it. Do you ever get the urge for a nice bacon cheeseburger? I am a... I, I am kind of a lifelong pescatarian. <laughs> so I would say no. However, I do F with a good impossible burger. Um... And I've recently discovered that I like pickles on them. I didn't think I used to. I was a, I was a pickle hater as a child, and I will now go in with all almost all of the burger toppings. I still don't do ketchup on burgers for unclear reasons, but um, I'll, I'll do a veggie burger with, like, the rest of the fixings. Your droid is so pretty. Thank you. It's a nice set. It's a cute set that she's got. Do I need to, um, so my honor is at 4.3k of, oh, I see, 15k. So you can have loads of it without getting in trouble. My marks of honor. Do I have them? I have eight on me. I must have been selling them. <laughs> Why so pesky? I'm just fun that way. I want, 
I want to... Oh yeah, I could also use my honor to upgrade the item level of my gear outside of PvP, but I don't really use this character for anything else, so I'm happy to just spend it on Monk. We can take, um... Five marks of honor. Funnily enough, still called an Orboreal Distinguishment, which I think is a holdover from Shadowlands. Or maybe Orboreal means something that is not Oribos related. What do I want? What do I want? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I want! I did it! I did the thing! I didn't think I would get it, um, I didn't think it would work that, that easily. I want to turn on her add-ons, actually. That's what we want to do. We want to make sure she's running what we need, so she's not gonna have DBM. ATT is nice, but not necessary for what she's doing. Bad boy levels is probably a good one. Big debuffs for sure. Character stats, yeah. Gladiator Lhasa. Omnibar in particular. Plater? No, I don't think she needs Plater. I'll get it anyway, just in case, I guess. I don't remember if she uses Plater or not. Rarity, Rematch, Scrap, Tom Tom, TSM, Weak Wars? Funnily enough, not using any Weak Wars. How do you deal with heavy metal buildup content in fish? Only eat fish every day. So, fun fact, and I don't mean to be dismissive, but being a pescatarian does not mean that you only eat fish. It just means that you can eat fish. There's also. Um, a really shocking couple of food groups called like grains and vegetables and legumes and fruits, um, bread. <laughs> uh, I would say that I eat fish probably once a week, maybe once every other week. Um, <laughs> it's also a good idea to look into which types of fish tend to be more prone to heavy metal buildup. Um, I sometimes do my own fishing. I have, um, I will go fishing and catch fish for my own food, but I, I'm not eating it every day. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I got a kick out of that. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Fingers crossed, updating so many visuals. Love to see more casting animations. Oh, I remember my sister had a friend who was a vegetarian growing up, and my mom asked her what her favorite vegetarian dish was, and she said, Craft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> um, so it's there's nothing to say that uh, nothing to say that just that eating meatless means that you're eating healthy. There, it's great if you're eating meatless and healthy, but it's not a requirement. Grains, vegetables, also dairy. Um, I'm not vegan, so I do consume eggs and uh, dairy products. Um, cheese, big fan of cheese. What am I doing? <laughs> I forgot about him. Pick up a trans if I can learn it. How do you know if someone is a vegetarian? They'll tell you. You asked me if I crave bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> I would posit that you started this. I want to check. I mean, is it even a croc today? It's Sunday. I don't even know when Karakta spawns anymore. Let's just go find a mailbox. Ah. <sighs> You're telling me that you don't go fishing every morning to catch your food for the day? That does sound like the dream. Mm. If I magically become super rich and I get waterfront property and I can just like catch rockfish <laughs> or, you know, trout if it was waterfront on a lake um, from my front door, you better believe I'm going to be late for stream every day. <laughs> Where's Loam? Loam is over here. I do love fishing. Croct is up today. Someone called him out of my shard maybe half an hour ago. Okay. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll poke and try and get a couple of Karakta kills. I, he's not, Karakta just doesn't like me. And that's okay, not everybody has to like me, but he's just, he just won't give it up. <laughs> stream while fishing. Mm -hmm. Fishing stream. <laughs> There's an Animal Crossing New Horizons NPC that gives the fishing dailies. And his whole thing is that he's a streamer. And it's, uh, it's, there's some very cute fishing slash streaming related puns. Am I back 
to where Croctus spawns? I've forgotten where Croctus spawns. Over here, over here. Pre-made, custom, find any groups? Oh, yeah, actually. Oh, I tagged it. I tagged it. I hit it with a heroic throw. That truly was a heroic throw. Thanks. Holy moly. Well, I was lucky. Loki Raider, thank you very much for the bits. Have I ever caught a three-eyed fish? I don't think so. I feel like this there's more to your comment than meets the eye and I'm not getting it whatever it is right over my head what <laughs> I've caught a one-eyed fish but that's just because sometimes in the lake stuff happens uh, who's still at the caverns you are Simpsons reference oh maybe I think, as a general rule, Irchi's references consistently go over my head. I think it's extremely uncommon that I catch one. <laughs> Archer Moo, thank you for these seven month reads. So, that's bait. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, man. That's probably why I was in holy spec, actually. It's the story of a businessman telling a guy relaxing and fishing he should monetize. Get it rich, do whatever he wants. Fisherman's like, what? So I can fish all day? I'm already doing. <sighs> that one hits a little close to home. The Simpsons was something that I think I wanted to watch it when I was a child because I was like, it's a cartoon. I'm a child. I'd like to watch the cartoon. And my parents were like, no, that one's for adults. You can't watch it. And then I went, oh, okay, that one's not for me. And then I never questioned that and never went back even years later when I like grew up. <laughs> I had a few different instances like that where somebody told me, you know, you cannot do this because it's not appropriate for your age. And then it was never brought up again. And I completely grew up, lived my life, never, ever, ever went back. <laughs> There's never an age where they're like, congratulations, you can now watch Silence of the Lambs or whatever it is. Although I have seen that and I did, I did, I did, I did, I did watch it. It was spooky. <laughs> I've told this story before, but I didn't strike matches for a very long time because I was not allowed to light matches as a kid. And um, I think it was early 20s, maybe 22, 23. I was already married. I was living in my home as an adult and I had a candle and I was like, I don't know how to do it. Because I, I had never used a lighter or a match because I was not allowed to as a kid. <laughs> because you know, you don't want children playing with matches but no one ever was like, all right, you're a grown up now. Here's how you do it. <laughs> but we got there. I think I was convinced for a long time that if I did light a match, I would burn down, like, the forest, like, the house, the surrounding trees, everything. Any character? I really wish this wouldn't happen on all your characters, especially after you've done it on your main. Don't recall ever having lit a match. Might have to do it sometimes just to do it. It's kind of fun. Um, it's kind of annoying trying to do the little paper book matches if the striking strip on the back of it has become completely smooth through use. Um, I don't know any cool tricks like lighting a match on... You know, you know how some people are like really like bush and they'll just do it off of like parts of their body or like, I don't know. There's like weird tricks for lighting matches. Never done any of that. 
but it's kind of fun. I liked the the actual like wood matches and not just the the paper ones. <laughs> they were more expensive, but they did a good job and they held a flame for longer if you were trying to get like a fire lit. Brick wall works too. Light it off a zipper. Never tried that. I feel like I have this idea that some people will do it off of especially rough patches of skin. So like somebody that has extremely dry elbows doing it on that patch of skin. And I don't know if that's insane and I dreamt it or if that's a real thing that some people do. Uh, these days I have an electric rechargeable USB lighter which is just like a gadget that I can charge with via USB and you press a button and it does a little electric thing that can light, light candles. Um, it's great because I don't have to like, you know, replace it the same way that you would a, like a lighter, lighter fluid or um, matches. But the downside is that it makes an extremely high pitched noise, which I can only barely hear at this point in my life, but my cat hates it. Um, she will clear right out of that whole half of the house if I use it. Um, so I try to make sure I have the door closed if I'm going to like light a candle because uh, I'm tra trying to traumatize my baby. <laughs> going to order one of those. I like them. Um, it's one of those things that I just kind of have around that's nice. I don't know if there's drawbacks to it, but it's done a good job for me. <sighs> Love my USB lighter. Really long snout and a safety switch. Fear me, I am the fire wizard. Hmm. Parallel universe hazel, frozen block of ice in the Canadian wilderness next to a neat pile of firewood and an unused box of matches. Sometimes it's fun to imagine different directions that your life could have gone and which skills you would have gotten instead of what you have and which areas in which you might have never developed and which you have now developed, you know? There's probably a world out there where I ended up... I mean, I guess it depends on what I ended up doing to earn a living. I don't know. I don't see myself having ever ended up in like a cabin in a wilderness until my 30s or 40s. And 20s me just wanted to do... I was too into the internet. I was too into the bright shinies. I wanted um, I wanted to like play games and do online stuff. And I had not as much interest in like chopping firewood and chores. Um, the outdoors didn't start to call to me again until I was probably close to 30. I use a magnesium fire stick for fire, just in case I'm ever run alone. Listen, it's, it doesn't count unless you let it roll into the fire while you're... And then have to <laughs> make fires from scratch for the entire rest of the show. <sighs> Farming Knowles in Westfall yesterday. Three fire ones dropped. Feel like that's unreal luck. When I was young, I would have thought that living in a rural area was very boring. Um, I would have thought that there's nothing cool happening here. I would have wanted to to live somewhere with more people where there was more like culture and like, I don't know, stuff going on. And I think I grew out of that. <laughs> yeah, so Karakta does spawn today, but definitely a real downturn in the amount of groups listed. By 20, I wanted to get Lonesome Vineyard away from all the noise and people. Hmm. I think that my wanting to be around, like, wanting to be somewhere cool years were probably in my teen years. I think by the time I was, like, 21, I was ready to just go back inside and play video games. More people sense us. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Karakta, thanks. Cheers. All right, one last chance for the day. It is up, right? Or maybe it's about to be up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Scared me for a sec. I don't know what I'm going to stream next week. It was fun streaming retail today, but I feel like I kind of caught up on the things that I wanted to do. Unless I was going to just kind of go ham on solo shuffle. 
and try to grind out that vicious war snail. Oh my goodness, my buttons are all messed up. I suppose to be fair, this is not my main or my alt priest. This is my old Shadowlands main priest. Nobody knows what her buttons are doing. She doesn't even have a void form. She has the Dark Ascension instead, that's weird. All right, good luck, everybody. <laughs> Somebody said good luck to me! <laughs> good luck to everyone. <laughs> good luck to me! In party chat. That's good. Mm -mm. No luck. Anyone getting lucky? Thanks. Uh, did you farm the fish for Hiracon? Did you get lucky on a kill? I farmed it. Um, I decided that I really wanted to grind that out. I refused to start killing it until I had farmed the fish because I was being weird and stubborn. Yeah, this is a, this is a mount drop. I uh, I didn't get the mount, but it's a chance at one. Wish it were easier to keep the bars and keybinds exactly the same. My method involves taking a screenshot and then referring back to the screenshot to rearrange everything. And clearly I don't do it very consistently, so I don't think my system's very good. It's a lot of characters. He's ready for BlizzCon. <laughs> well, I am going to wrap up for today. I will be back on Wednesday for a fresh brand new week of WoW streams. I might do more hardcore. I might not. I haven't decided. We'll have to see. Um, I'll try not to die over my weekend. <laughs> Appreciate you guys and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs>